My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. <laughs> Rahamanda Sabrahila Konda Rabahash Seligabundra Paraski Falandra Maradadas Rahimata Sapali Marata Sundarahas Shalabanda Patu Paradiga Sadash Rakabanda Patu Suzuria Nala Amanda Hai Seligabundra Parustus Kabalina Rakabanda Parasila 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 Pelo Mantra Pago Brahila Kabas Thank you Holy Spirit Father we thank you In Jesus precious name Precious Father, we thank you for tonight. Even as we congregate under the auspices of your spirit. We ask that by the economy of mercy, you will grant us capacity tonight. Strength and access into the realms of mysteries. The realms of insight. Where men are strengthened beyond their weak and feeble limitations. Father, we ask that you grant us the kind of mercy that the children of Israel had. That caused them by priesthood to legislate and to litigate against the forces that had them bound for 430 years. And on the strength of that priesthood, they walked through the belly of the Red Sea and they defied the powers of Leviathan. Walked on dry ground, dead zones, until they found their place in you, a land that flows with milk and honey. Tonight, Lord, we ask that you will grant us access to walk in deep waters. Grant us the capacity to find the ancient paths where the patriarchs of old walked. The places where they kept their feet and on the strength of that ground they altered even the powers of the constellation and made every force in creation to walk in their favor. Grant us such insight, such strength, such access tonight. So that the weakest one among us will become a mighty nation. We ask that beyond the utterance, let there be a tangible communication of your spirit and your essence. That essence that will not deplete, even though all creation depends upon it for sustenance. Furnish us with it tonight, Lord. We give you all the glory. And we trust that that which you have in mind. For this noble gathering will be achieved even by the power of your spirit. Take all the glory, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Wow, that was awesome. You may be seated. God bless you. Tonight, I would just have to, because of the little time, do a little definition of terms, and then we'll do a little demonstration of what we'll be sharing.
so that men can be brought into the reality of what we talk about. The beauty of the gospel is not in the intelligent nature of its presentation. The beauty of the gospel is in the power that it communicates in order to make the receptors become what it talks about. The doctrine of righteousness will be a waste if all you know about it is the intelligibility of its creation of its design until it becomes an experience it is not a gospel the difference between a teacher a preacher or a proclaimer and a lecturer is that the things we utter they are backed up by a government from another realm making those words potent in the lives of the hearers and they become that which is uttered Tonight, there is not so much that may be communicated in articulate speech. But the good news is that certain truths and certain realities, they are transferred, they are impacted as a body of spirits. So even if you don't understand what will be shared, the spirit will be impacted. And you will discover you will be changed into another man. I trust God tonight for a very tangible transformation in the lives of the hearers so that there will be a notable difference in your life from this day forward. Glory to God. I want to appreciate God's servant, a dear friend and a brother who has given us the privilege to be here even this evening to share the word of the Lord. Can you please celebrate Jesus for my brother Friday. <laughs> and now it's, it's such a great honor. He's a man that emits such a, a beautiful flavor of the Holy Spirit. And if you listen to him, you'll discover that we drink from the same fountain. Glory to God. I want to salute my brother and covenant friend and brother covenant brother and friend rather Victor but who came with me this evening he's been standing in for the past two days and I'm sure you've been tremendously blessed you see there is not so much I can say tonight because he would have said virtually everything I want to say except that the word of God is fresh it's fresh every time it comes down my sister, sister Bumi and her dear husband Guntebi are here with us Wonderful ministration. Glory to God. And Sister Vicky. Sister Vicky. Sister Vicky. You see, her ministry is going to typify most of the things I'll be saying tonight. And by the time I'm done talking, both of us will minister. Yes. You know, the last time I ministered, here, not this exact location the chants that were coming out of her spirit and the sounds she was creating that was what I listened, I didn't listen to the message I preached I actually collected my message and her worship session it was her worship sessions that I played for more than six months I kept hearing it and it kept transporting me it kept transporting me She's an amazing person. Can you celebrate the work of God? I know. See, the songs programmed my mindset. I keep sometimes I just keep hearing them in my spirit. And then I when I sing them, I try to sing them the way she sang them, but I don't have that energy and that flavor. You will, you will minister tonight again. She holds a key. Listen, there are many kinds of worship ministers. There are people also when they worship, they hear what they say. But what they do is that they quicken your spirit, man, and then the desire to come into the presence and worship is activated. So they are ministers of the presence. There are certain persons that 
beyond ministering the present they hold keys keys to strategic places in the spirit they are activators of encounters they are activators of spiritual gifts they are activators of possibilities in the spirit so by the time you listen to them you discover that certain dimensions of God that you have not labored for we begin to find expression in your life she is such a minister that holds keys to mysteries to dimensions to realms of encounter Yahweh and we worship you for life those were her sounds from everlasting to everlasting everlasting to everlasting everlasting to everlasting this is how we praise him you will hear it in the room and the whole place is saturated the power of God the anointing of the spirit visions open visions visions I say what did God do to this lady celebrate Jesus she's a wonderful person Do you know why I'm taking time to, to appreciate her so much? Many dimensions of God that opened in my life in those seasons, she activated them. You don't understand the mystery of the ministry of the psalmist. She was the one ministering to me consistently in that season. She activated dimensions in my life, seasons in my life that would have taken months of prayers months of fasting she's a blessing to the body of Christ I was telling of my last night I said every meeting I go for in Makodi now she will go with me and minister I would, have, I would have been traveling with her but she's a lady and many will not understand but I said every meeting I go, I attend the Makodi I will personally let her know ahead of time and book the appointment this is a special minister of the gospel a special a special <laughs> You will not understand what I'm telling you. Some of us we interpret energy in the spirit. We can interpret energy. When people are ministering, most times you can tell by the spirit the height where their voices are coming from and the kind of energy they emit. There are people you listen to, the desire for sin will die in your life because of the kind of energy they traffic the kind of spirit they traffic and as we share about sounds tonight you will understand better spirits travel on vibrations and one of the cardinal vibrations of spirit transport is sound that is why the holy spirit came to the earth realm on the wings of sounds he said there was a sound as of a rushing mighty wind and the moment they were able to decode the sound that was coming from the heavens of God the Holy Ghost began to alight so the vehicle of transport upon which the Holy Ghost came was a sound he said building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost he said be not drunk with wine daring in its excess but be filled with the Holy Spirit that means if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit there are sounds that you activate and the more those sounds saturate you the more the Holy Spirit saturates you because spirits they travel on sound energy sound is a mystery it's a mystery not many know it that's why Jesus said every idle word you speak you will account for it some of the things you utter they are the things that energize demons to walk in your life and in your word 
most of the things you say carelessly they are the things that have kept you in bondage till now because those sounds they are conveyors of spirits celebrate God's servant Samson Otonu you know Samson Otonu is my very good friend he is my brother that man loves the kingdom he loves the Lord he has been given a special ministry to advance the strategic operation of God in a dispensation you see there are many people that have been given ministries but the job of others is to ensure that the ministries get to the ends of the earth everything Jesus was doing would have ended in Nazareth but there were people that were sponsoring it and even after he left they sponsored it those people are too important you can't over, over you can't over emphasize the quality of what they do in the body and somehow my friend happens to be one of the few that the Lord have chosen for this dispensation to advance the frontiers of the kingdom can you celebrate his service in the house of God I'm surprised to see my guys from the medical medical school Abba Benedict <laughs> can you imagine how did you guys come here <laughs> can you imagine Tehima is also here how did you get here see Dr. Comfort right? wow glory to God oh my God just lift your hands toward heaven we have 30 minutes to share the word of God glory to God you reign on high Adonai 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 this title but honestly it's not a concept for babes there are certain teachings that are meant for people who are actively involved in spirit business because the economy of the operation do not lend themselves to babes when we begin to talk about matters of courts young believers may not understand when we begin to talk about things that have to do with sound babes in Christ may not understand and then when you talk about power most people don't even know what it means most times we think it's about people falling down in meetings we don't really know what power is meant for there are matters of depth in the kingdom there are businesses for people that have journeyed with God to a level we are commitment commitment of life devotion unto God have become the centerpiece of their lives people that God can make bold to commit kingdom responsibilities to because at this time they are trading by the economy of mysteries it's not a topic that you can handle in a gathering of beings I'll just try to explain the peripheries at least it will help you become more conscious cautious and careful because of necessity these are part and parcel of your life in your everyday operation 
What are sounds? If I begin to define it in terms of physics, that will be the lowest level of what it is. But as we began already, let me just begin by telling you that sounds are the conveyors of spirits, the carriers of spirits, the communicators of spirits. And you need to understand that this realm is not a realm of spirits. This is the realm of man. But man is not designed to operate and live for himself. Man was designed to traffic the dimensions of spirit beings so that his life can become a summation of the desires of spirits. The needs of spirits and the possibilities of spirits. You know when John went to heaven he saw a lot of things. In fact, at a point he recorded that he saw a strong angel who was proclaiming with a loud voice. He said, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seas thereof? No man was found worthy. He was reading the charter of heaven as it as touching the purposes of men that were living in the earth realm. And unfortunately, the extent to which that angel had access to what the degree of judgment. He had no access into the portals of salvation. The possibilities in Christ that provide for our salvation was not yet disclosed to that angel. For John to have understanding of what God wanted to do as touching the destiny, the eternal purpose of man, he needed to go higher in the spirit and receive counsels from people or from beings that are operating at higher levels. And that was when he met one of the elders. And the elder said unto him, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed. If John had returned from heaven at that time, the message John would have bring to the, brought to the earth was that man is doomed. Because from everything the angel said, salvation was not captured. The angel only gave a narrative of what happened from when man was created and up to the point where man was condemned. But there were people in heaven that had higher insight and secret because of their degree of proximity with God. And it is those same personalities that define the reason and the essence for creation. You need to understand that the level of the operation in the heavens is beyond the operation of any angelic beings. They are called the 20 and 4 elders. They are the only ones recorded in scriptures to sit on thrones around the throne of God. So on the strength of proximity and stature in heaven, everything they say is from the deepest level of mysteries. And what did they say? They said all things were created for thy pleasure. That was the summary of creation. It didn't need to be brought in a very bogus statement. The summary of your existence is that you were created for his pleasure. These were the beings that explained the very reason why God created us. So you are not created for yourself. You were created for his pleasure. And these beings that are custodians of secrets that brought us this revelation made us or indicted our existence. If you are created for his pleasure, it means you have no existence unless your life begins to give pleasure to him. And the only way you can give pleasure to him is to be able to host his dimensions and to communicate it to your world so that he dominates your world and one of the ways by which his essence can be captured and transmitted is by sound so that lets you know the degree of importance of the kinds of sounds and vibrations that come out of you because every time God whose pleasure and desire is to dominate to colonize, to subdue and to conquer the earth wants to have that reality that desire of him find expression it will only flow through the gateway of sound so sound is the only economy in heaven that makes it possible for the desire of God to find expression because first of all sound transmits God so what brings God into your world is sound there will be no God in your life except you understand the kinds of sound that can traffic his dimension 
Did you remember when you gave your heart to Christ? The Bible said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, because if you confess, you host it. And on the strength of that communication, Jesus becomes a part of your life because his realities and his dimension are transmitted by sounds. Most of us, everything we say are negative. You know, I'm trying to be basic because of the kind of audience I'm seeing. For those of you who are very spiritual, sorry. <laughs> you know, the greatest strength of the link is at the weakest spot. So we need to carry everybody along. Most of you, you are manipulated by demons because the kind of sound you release, they trap their possibilities. Nothing is working for me. I am sick. I am dying. Oh. I will die. Oh. I don't die. You don't know that you are trafficking spirits and their possibilities into your life and into your world. Most children cannot prosper today because this kind of sound codings that they have been coded with by their parents are conveyors of costs. See your big head. Good for nothing. Wasted child. Baboon. And then when the child grows, the parents begin to hope for something good to come out of the child. You have encoded that child with a negative energy. Conveyors. I don't know why nothing is working for me. I don't know why I can't prosper. Conveyors of spirits. He said, as he spake unto me, the spirit entered into me. As he spake. You know, most times we come from meeting and we say, God bless you. The, the people don't understand what we are doing. You see, the word blessing means to cause to prosper. To make the possibility of prosperity to work for you. So when we say God bless you We are not just using church cliche We know we are communicating a spirit That will make your life to begin to prosper Even though all the circumstances around you are contrary And when you grow in God One thing you begin to do consciously Is to speak words that carry the life The essence and the energy of God This is not positive theology this is understanding of how the realms operate. My house is constantly saturated with angelic sounds. Angelic. I can create the atmosphere in my room without praying. I know the sound that can transmit the kind of dimensions and possibilities I want to see. When you talk negative, you can't live around me. I don't know how to talk it. I can't hear it. Jesus said, Take no thought. Say. Because when you say, you have created a possibility for the spirit from when that inspiration was born to be trafficked in your direction. I don't talk negative. I tell myself, I am a blessing to this world. I don't care what you think. I am a king. I say, if I come there, things must work in my favor. I don't know how to struggle. I don't know how. It doesn't matter. He said there will be no water in the valley. There is no water. It is obvious there is no water. He said, but it shall be filled. He said, although the fig tree might not blossom, the labor of the holy might fail. There will be no head in the storm. But I will say, the Lord is my helper. He will cause my feet to walk in my high places. He will make my feet to be like hinds feet. That's a man of understanding because he knows that his utterances are conveyors of spirits. It's a business of spirits. <laughs> Some of you think it's by laying on of hands. Most of the hands that are laid on you, you diffuse them before you reach your house. You leave a meeting where prophecies were altered from the podium that you will prosper, you will go forward. The moment you go out of the meeting, you tell your brother, oh boy, nothing they walk on. The man of God plants you uproot. Most of you are uprooters of blessings. Nothing they walk on. Oh boy, this exam, I go fail, I go. I never read you. What about the possibilities of favor? 
What about the economy of mercy? What about the hand of God? What about the anointing of the Spirit? Everything that work in your favor, you don't know them. He said that the communication of your faith will become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you. It's only the bad things you know and those are the ones you talk. So you give demons license over your life. And that is why you can never be delivered. Because every time they break the chain, you circle yourself with seven more chains. Sounds, they are conveyors of spirits. It's a mystery that we may not fully understand. But the scriptures affirm it. The scriptures affirm it. And the Bible said in Romans chapter 15 verse 4. He said the things that were written for time. They were written for our learning. So that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. He said the things that were written for they were written for our example unto whom the end of the age is come. The context of that scripture speaks about judgment. But as it is for judgment, so it is for blessings. The kind of spirit that works for you, they are contained and trafficked in sound. Why do you think when we come to minister, the atmosphere is charged? But if you want the people to be healed, you must declare healing in their direction. Because the spirit that makes for healing will travel in the direction of that utterance. If you don't alter it, they may go back. Even though the power was available, they will go back sick. The Bible said in Luke 5 17, it said Jesus was ministering and the power of God was there to heal. So the energy may be there, but you direct it with your words. That's why you may stand worshiping God, you are lost in the spirit. But when we say, Lord, touch, you see people begin to fall. They were in the spirit, but the energy of the spirit was not directed. It's the mystery of sound. Spirit, the trouble in sound. God knows this, and that is what God applies. I was teaching in Lafayette three weeks ago. I told them there are three cardinal things that govern the operation of the realm. The first is the office of the Christ. The Christ is first of all the conveyor of the Godhead. So it is in Jesus that the fullness of the Godhead dwells. So when we speak about the Christ, we are making reference to God and everything he stands for. And we are also talking about the administration of the purposes of God. Because that throne regulates every other thing. Our callings are regulated by that throne. In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 8, it says, Who shall declare his generation? So your calling as an apostle is because who shall declare his generation? Your calling as a music minister is because who shall declare his generation? The second thing are the mysteries of the kingdom, which sound is one of them. The third are the principles of the kingdom. God Himself lives by this principle. If you study the book of Genesis, chapter 1, Moses was the one giving us an oversight of everything that was happening. If not because Moses narrated it, you will never know there was darkness because you will never hear God call darkness. The Bible said the earth was full of darkness chaos and the spirit of God was moving on the face of the deep he was moving and contemplating what he wanted to do he never spoke when he concluded what he wanted the Bible said God speak he said let there be light if you were the one you would have called darkness 1000 times before you caught light because you don't have understanding God never mentioned the darkness let there be light and he said the light was. He knows that his essence is transferred by sound. Most of us, if we take an assessment of our words now, we have already condemned our lives. That is why we preach the gospel, so that you will know the things that are to your advantage. Even when you fall into sin, the cure is not keep talking about the sin. 
the cure is to begin to find repentance and talk about the provisions that you have in righteousness that's how God operates it's a mystery in the kingdom I'm taking it gradually so that even the least among us we know how to apply it because it is the application that makes the difference it is not the knowledge God is not committed to what you know He's committed to what you do with what you know he said, I am the Lord that confirmed the words of my servant and performed the counsel of my messengers. You apply it in your life. Things may not seem to be working. You keep talking it. You keep saying it. Because every time you speak, you give expression to the energy and the life and the essence of spirits. And you don't need to be a big man of God. It is a principle for operation in this realm. It's a principle. Sound transmits spirits. Maybe somebody wants to say I am blessed. I think somebody wants to say I'm blessed. Maybe what you've never told yourself before, you can tell yourself in the next one minute. Come on. You know most times, most times, some persons don't even know how to tell themselves good things. That's why most people are easily deceived. Because they don't tell themselves they are beautiful. So one foolish guy comes up and says, Hey, baby, you are beautiful. And the lady loses her virginity. She has never really appreciated the fact that she's beautiful. So when somebody tells her she's surprised, she's shaking. Oh my God, thank you very much. Are you just being aware? Say, man, you look good. And the guy loses his comportment. You don't know how to tell yourself good things. That's why he muffles you when somebody tells you. Come on, tell yourself something for one minute. <laughs> you will be shocked that some people have not known what to tell themselves till now. Hi, dear Holy Spirit, help you to help us, help us, help us. Lord. Sounds are also transmitters of spirit possibilities. Sounds are transmitters of spirit based possibilities. God may have a great desire for you, it won't come to pass. I will show you. Two major things that sound transmit. Two major things. In Numbers chapter 6, from verse 23. Look at it. Maybe you should look at the scriptures. It will help. It will help you better. It will help you better. Look at Numbers chapter 6. Very quickly, verse 23. See what the Bible says. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, unto his sons, saying on this wise, Ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. Listen, God wanted to bless Israel. It was his desire to bless them. But there was no way that blessing was going to leave the realm of God to the realm of man. He had concluded in his heart to bless them. Why are they not just blessed? You say you want to bless them, then they are blessed. But blessing is just not, it's not just a feeling, it's not just a knowing. It's a tangible energy in the spirit. And it must be communicated, it must be imparted, and it must be received. Because blessings makes for possibilities in your favor. And the reason is because it is an energy. That is why if you are blessed, even if a demon wants to resist you, he can't. Because the demon, that energy opposes his own energy. When Balaam came to curse the children of Israel, what did he say? He said, they are blessed. He said, how can you curse that with God are blessed? It's an energy. The energy of a curse can't work against that energy. That energy is superior. How can you curse them? 
and he concluded he said God their God is in their midst that means that energy called a blessing is also a spirit based reality because of the blessing God was in their midst God wanted to bless Israel so that be easy be blessed he said tell them this word tell them because if those sound vibrations are not released those possibilities will not be transferred he said the Lord make his face to shine upon you why don't the face not shine it's a mystery what you say will determine what you will become it doesn't just inform your conviction it is an energy that makes you to become the empowerment that is in the blessing is communicated by the sound that interprets it Isaac was blessing Esau in the stead of Jacob he said I bless you with corn and with wine he had no corn, he had no wine. But he spoke the words. Those words have the capacity to make everything that can make wine and corn in the hand of a man to come to him. These guys were masters of these things. They knew it like they knew their names. So they don't just talk. They don't talk. These men, they talk as custodians of the oracles of God. That is why I say when a man speaks, let him speak the oracles of God they are energy they are spirits he said that the face of God may shine upon you that the contenance of God may be lifted above you and he said something when he finished the whole blessing he said place the name of the Lord upon their children with words they could place the seal of God on a man with words Jacob stood up and said Reuben according to your ordination you are supposed to be a symbol of strength and wisdom he said but today because you are as unstable as water you will not prosper it didn't matter how he was designed you see some of you are intelligent and then you think it's about intelligence so you pride yourself in your intelligence and then when you finish getting all the certificates everywhere you go looking for job you just receive your application and throw it in the trash can some of you are beautiful you think it's about beauty I went to preach somewhere I saw a 38 year old lady this lady was like an Indian what? how possible? How? I, I saw the lady I liked her how can a lady as beautiful as this not be married? Maybe when she was 22, she thought it was about beauty. So she spent all her time on the makeups. I heard there is one now they call how do they call it? Is it comma? Or I bond? Is it bond? How do they call it? <laughs> Bonding. So they will bond, they will put the bond so that the foundation can be built on their face. You know, these things are built nowadays. Those days, ladies raw powder. Now they build powder. <laughs> because the layer, the layer of the powder will be as thick as one cm. So they will draw, they will draw a fresh eyelash. The, the face is casted like cake. 38 years. No man has said hello. How? Not even the ones that don't have the fear of God. <laughs> at least all these guys that are looking for ladies everywhere at least one should have seen her nobody have approached her it's a mystery it's a mystery it's an energy it's an energy did you not see Jesus came to Peter's mother-in-law and the Bible said he rebuked the fever it was not a spirit that held her bound it was an energy of a spirit the same way, a spirit of course, if he imparts energy on you, you will go with the course. So when we bless, we transmit the energy of God. We transmit it. Sounds are too important 
you don't play with them. You don't talk because you feel like saying it. You don't talk like that. Every idle word you speak, you will account for it because the immortals they know what you are doing. You may not be aware. Ignorance is not an excuse. He said, in the days of ignorance, God overlooks, but now, but now, He commands. He doesn't advise. He commands all men to repent and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. These are possibilities that are in sound. Blessings are trafficked by utterances. Spirit-based realities are communicated by utterances. It's not necessarily when you fall. If you say you are blessed, you are blessed. You are blessed. He's on the part of his life. Until he came to a point when he broke the yoke of his shoulder. What the father spoke was actually a yoke. He said when you are tired of that yoke, you may break it. A curse that was released was a yoke. So that thing held him down all his life. He will struggle, he can't. Meanwhile, what went in his direction were words. Sounds. They are not things you play with. Sounds are conveyors of judgment. When God wants to judge you, he won't slap you. You know, most of the time, the reason we use our natural tools is because of our level of weakness. You are weak. That's why you need to slap somebody to make a statement. Kick somebody to make a statement. Spirits don't operate like that. They are superior in strength. If God wants to judge you, He will just pick the word. You are judged. And that is it. And then I asked him to Peter. He said, why have you allowed Satan to enter into your heart? The man dropped down and died. The wife came. Lied again. He said, ah. See the feet of them that carried your husband to bury they are at the door. Instantly the woman went down and died. It's a mystery. It's communicated by sound. You don't know what words are. Everything fighting your life. The only way you can judge it is by your words. That is why you must guard your heart so that it is preserved as a pure fountain of God. He said, cut your heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. In Proverbs 4 verse 23. For how do those issues of life proceed from your heart? It's by your words. Most Christians talk anyhow they want. The moment they think it, they talk it. They think it, they talk it. And they don't know why their life has cut out. They can't go in one direction. They can never go in one direction. Jesus stood. And there was a sound from heaven. And the people say, ah, he thunder it. Thunder. That's where they are hearing from. You know, most of you, you hear from a lower energy level. That's why you don't know the implication of the things you say. Most of the things you say, you think you are just making, trying to make an articulate expression. You don't know that beyond what you are saying, there is something back in it that can cause havoc to your world. When Jesus was deciphering the sound, he said, now is the judgment of this world. So the judgment against Lucifer came as a packet of sound. Now is the prince of the cosmos cast out. And if I be lifted up, I will draw men to myself. Sound, they are deeper. Sound are activators of seasons and dispensations. Our sister picked the scripture from Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 1. He said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the day had no significance except as there was sound from heaven. When the day came, what activated the dispensation of the Holy Spirit was a sound. When the day came, there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 he said the son of man will return with the blast of the voice of the archangel. 
So the end of the age, which is another strategic dispensation, will be activated by another kind of sound. When God wants to bring you into new dispensations of His oppression in your life, if you are discerning, you will discover you begin to hear different kinds of sound. Some of the music you love, you won't like them again. You begin to desire fresh kinds of sound. Because those sounds are transport mediums that we activate those portals for you to enter those dispensations. That's why most people that expose themselves to demonic sound, they never grow in God. You ask them, they say, is it a sin? No, it's not a sin. But you will be stunted all your life. You will never move forward. Because you don't know the damage that they cause to you. Apart from the fact that they traffic demons into your life, traffic energies from the demonic realm into your life, your heavens will be locked. Because when it opens, you will not be aware. Did you not know the Bible said, those who are in the bad places of the weak desert, he said they will not see good when it comes. They are activator. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon the holy mountain. For the day of the Lord cometh. That's why you see every man who goes far and does deep business with God is a man of sounds. They don't joke with it. They are men of sounds. They are men of sound because breaking news from heaven they come as sounds. They are men of sounds. Either you see them with strange kinds of music. Some are morning to night they are singing hymns. Morning to night. Some are singing praise songs. They must tell one way or the other. Sound will be part of their constitution. It's a mystery. And you must learn it so that you make the most out of it. Sound. Your seasons will only be activated by sounds. Your battles will be judged by sounds. Your blessings will we come by sounds. It's a mystery. How it happens, we don't know. But we know that it is so. The greatest, one of the greatest and most amazing judgment the world have ever seen was the judgment of Jericho. He said, gather seven priests. And let those seven priests have seven horns. Meanwhile, God told Joshua, He said, behold, I have given unto you Jericho. It's kings. It's mighty men. God has given it to him. How will he get it? It's by taking advantage of the technology of sound. Go around it seven days. The first six days, blow the trumpet once. On the seventh day, blow the trumpet seven times. The wall sank. How was that possible? You will think it's only the wall that sank. Something has happened. Everybody inside the wall of Jericho was weakened. The Bible said every man went and the person he saw he plundered him. So even babes who were not trained in the art of war they were killing people that day because the sound immobilized the enemy. It immobilized them. There are many altars fighting you. What you need is the right sound. It will immobilize the altar. It will immobilize the priest. And then you will come only to pick the spoils. It's a mystery. But most times we don't know the things that are to our advantage. So the greatest enemy of your life is yourself. The greatest weakness of your life is your ignorance. Because you don't know the things that are to your advantage. Most of us, pursue men of God, we think it's about the oil. Most of these men, they are not big in themselves. It is the things they know and practice. You come to meet a man of God, it's the same God bless you that you will never tell yourself that he will tell you. The same God bless you, you will never tell yourself. That's what the man tells you. He has, he has developed his soul in eternal life until he believes in the efficacy of that word. You are sick, you come to him and say, Be healed. The same be healed, you will never tell yourself. Meanwhile, every one of us have the same Holy Spirit, every one of us have the same faith, every one of us have the same angelic cooperation. But the difference is that most of us are not developed. And the only way you develop your faith is to engage it. Sounds are creative. Sounds are creative. Is 
anything you want to see happen in your life, begin to talk it. You will be shocked. You will be shocked. I learned this one from the mightiest of men. People like Pastor Chris, they be as talking sessions. He will sit down with boxers and singlet and say, I'm anointed of the Holy Spirit. I heal the sick. I raise the dead. I command bones and they are mended. I'm the king. I'm the priest. He keeps talking. They are called talking sessions. When you talk, what you do is that you educate your mind differently. The reason you believe what you believe today is because you have heard it over time. You may be beautiful, but they tell you you are ugly, you are ugly. After a long time, you will lose your confidence. And you may be very ugly, but because they keep telling you are beautiful. Have you seen some very ugly ladies do some things? The confidence they have. You see a lady as ugly as you can imagine. And then when she's comforting herself and doing her thing, it's as if the world is all about her. She doesn't care what you think. She has built confidence in her spirit. She has built confidence. Your mind is designed to process information. That's what your mind does. Your mind is designed to process information. Even if God begins to do something in your life, you will need to convince yourself that this thing is a dimension. If not, you'll be telling yourself, this thing will work, so this thing will work. Those of you who are preachers, you know now. You know that the power of God is there. When you want to pray for the sick, your mind still begins to troubleshoot. Are you sure this person will be healed? Oh God, I received this thing from the Lord. I know. Why are you now trying to troubleshoot when I'm going for action? The reason you are troubleshooting at that time is because you have not convinced yourself in the closet enough. You need to educate your mind. If not, the world will educate you. They have told you too many things and you have believed it. The only way you will unlearn is to tell yourself what God says about you. I stood in a meeting. The anointing became strong and my convictions began to speak. I didn't know what I was saying. But when I heard the thing, I was roaring like a lion. I said, I am a revivalist. I am an apostle. I have touched the powers of the age to come. I walk in the corridors of the immortals. I, it was coming. That is my conviction. I don't need anybody to persuade me. It took many years before many people began to call me apostle. Apostle. Now, Apostle Arume will see me the point and say, My apostle Europa. I knew I was before I met him. I didn't need conviction. But as a mark of humility, I was waiting for the day of ordination. But I knew. You see people every day asking you, say, Sir, what, what, what does God want me to do? What is my calling? And then you ask them, God has been dealing with them about souls. God has been dealing with them about praying for the sick. They know what God wants them to do. But they want to hear it from you again so that they will feel happy or confident. They just want to be happy so that they will say, Kai, that man of God to say, I'm a seer. Meanwhile, three prophets have told the person already, but he wants to hear it again. Why not lock the door and tell yourself, I'm a prophet? The nations will hear me, the nations will bow. I will challenge Satan, I will fight iniquity. My generation must submit to me. What if for a prophet who doesn't believe in you say, some of those things they tell you they just want to I beg leave me alone leave me alone. <laughs> sounds they are creators God came the only way he recreated the world was by words the first time he created the world was by sound he said where were you when the sons of the morning sang into the foundations of the world so he created the world by sound he recreated the world by sound and he will create the new Jerusalem by sound anything you want to see in your life the power is on your tongue that's why he said death and life you don't tell yourself you will not see it how many times will you see preachers tell you what you want to hear how many times will you meet them there are over 100 people troubling if I go on Facebook now, oh, you see messages. 70% of them is to tell them about what God wants them to do. I don't have their time. And it's not just about me. Imagine people who have 10 million followers. You think he has your time? The guy was walking 
from Monday to night. He has preached in 12 meetings in, one, in seven days. He is looking for where he would put his head and sleep. And then you come and say, Sir, uh, I had a dream yesterday. He is not hearing you. If you ask him, What did I say? you'll be shocked that he didn't hear you. He is overwhelmed with bodies. What is troubling his heart is the nations. The nations. You who have been saved, you won't go and develop. Sometimes when you ask a man of God, you tell a man of God something. Try to find out in all humility. If what you said, he, don't, he didn't hear you. You want to create a life for yourself. Begin to proclaim it. He confirmed the words of his servant. He performed the counsel of his messengers. That's how God operates. Most of us have never spoken to ourselves. The only thing we remember are the insults and the causes that were laid in our lives. We can even remember the causes that they levered on us when we were 10 years old because we heard it over and over. It has formed our mindsets. The reason you see most children, they are not confident. You bring them before people and they are fidgeting. Say, take the microphone and talk. They begin to cry. There's no confidence built in their spirit. Words can destroy and they can create. That's why you begin to speak consciously to your life. It's a mystery. I began by telling you that they traffic spirits. They also traffic spirit-based possibility. It's not psyching yourself. It is saying what God says because in it is the power of God. The Bible said the gospel is the power of God. How is the gospel preached? When you meet somebody, do you think the gospel to the person? You utter it. For that power to be trafficked, you utter Sounds are creative objects. They are creative strategies in the spirit. And only men that takes advantage of them can utilize them. And lastly, on the possibility of sound, they are vehicles of transport. Sounds are vehicles of transport. You want to go to high places in the spirit, the shortcut is, is, is by sound. There's a place for prayer. I will talk to you about priesthood for three minutes before I stop. But brother, it's not all the time we need to pray. I had a busy day until 5.30 today before I came here. I needed my soul to be ventilated. If I want to speak in tongue, I will need to speak in tongue for at least two hours before I can preach in a meeting. For my tongue to be anointed. For my soul to jack up to the realm of inspiration. I've been talking to you without paper. I talk from inspiration. Even if I plan a message, I can't follow it. For my soul to be jacked up, I need to speak in tongues for at least two hours before a meeting. If I don't, I will struggle under a closet. Because my soul needs to experientially sit with Christ in heavenly places. I have 15 minutes to come for this meeting. What will I do? I went and activated sound. 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 As the song was playing, the anointing began to flow from my head. And then I told him, well, I said, Kai, it don't open. I quickly carried something. I began to write. I began to write. The whole message downloaded in five minutes. It's a mystery of sound. It's a mystery. And the beauty of operating by inspiration is that it downloads into your spirit before you can teach it. So you have first-hand experience of the message. If I'm talking, if I come for a meeting, I know when the power of God will begin to move. Because as the, the way the message came, it was growing in my soul. When it exploded and I couldn't bear it anymore, if I'm talking in the auditorium, that's how it will be growing. If you read that point where it exploded in my heart, it will explode in the beauty. I am just recoiling what has already happened in the spirit. It's by sound. Never allow anything negative influence your life. Jesus said, take no thought, say. Take no thought, say. Take no thought, say. Salavandash. Corabandra valiscos. Negronda fratiga salavanda. Salavanda primos camara diastas. Sabalabranda duriask. Paradis. Capitas. Rapapandra paros.
the night is what the Bible calls priesthood. Priesthood is only possible by sound. You may not understand the significance of priesthood. This kingdom, this kingdom is meant for only one set of people. They are called priests. And those priests are expected to reign as kings. Listen, the kingdom is not meant for disciples. The kingdom is not meant for servants. The kingdom is not meant for friends. The kingdom is not meant for sons. The kingdom is meant for priests and kings. Everything Jesus does for us bring us to a level of sonship. That's the highest level the finished works of Jesus can take you to become a son. A son is entitled to inheritance. The Bible said the heir the heir, that's the son but it is possible for the son that owns everything in the kingdom to be a babe and the bible said if the son is a babe it's not different from a servant and servants have no inheritance the only way you can walk in this kingdom is to be a priest the bible said he has made us a choosing generation a royal priesthood the word royal is the word kingship that means you rule in this kingdom by authority. We are the word of the king is there is power. Who can say unto him what to start? But for you to exercise authority, for you to have the experience of everything Jesus has paid for, is not to be a son, is to be a priest. Only priests have the experience of the kingdom. You don't know why you are still struggling with sin. There is no doubt you are a son, but you are struggling with sin because you are not a priest. The moment this two begins to find expression in your life, sin will collapse. You don't know why you are struggling with attacks. You are not struggling with attacks because you are a son. You are struggling with attacks because you are not a priest. The moment this two begins to rise, the experience of the possibilities of the kingdom begins to find expression. You want to touch God tangibly, it's my priesthood. The priesthood is like the tabernacle. You will travel from the gate where you see the finished works of Jesus. It takes you to the altar of sacrifice where your flesh dies. It takes you to the lava where you experience the government and the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit. It takes you to the inner court where you see the altar of shoe bread, where the word of God begins to strengthen your spirit. It takes you to the menorah where you see the seven lampstand that light things and illuminate your spirit. It takes you to the altar of incense where intercession breaks out of you. But until you leave the altar of incense, you can't enter the Holy of Holy. The Holy of Holy is the place of experience. Many don't have experience because they stop at the gate. They receive Jesus and everything is did for them. But they never travel in the gates of this truth. So they never have experience. You talk about power, they have never experienced it. You talk about holiness, they have never experienced it. You talk about wisdom, they have never experienced it. Prosperity, they have never experienced it. That is why for them, the kingdom is a set of rules. That rules that they practice and they can't fulfill. That's what the Israelites suffer. They thought it was a rule, but God was talking about relationship. He was talking about experience. He was talking about oneness. He said in Exodus 19 verse 4, He said, remember how I carried you on my wings unto myself. Unto myself. Experience is born by priesthood. And there's only one way to legislate the economy of priesthood by prayer. And prayer is possible by sound. So sound carries you to the presence. Sound carries you to the present. And until you come to the present, you can't fight the darkness in your family. You can wake up in the night and draw the altars that will not move because you have not entered the presence. You can judge and legislate with words that will not move. You have not entered the presence. The reason most of us are walking like dead men is because there is no priesthood. And priesthood is possible by the right kind of sound. It's called the sound of prayer. In your name, Adonai, you reign. Adonai, Adonai, you reign. Adonai, Adonai, 
to open in the name of Jesus. La Coparasca. Begin to speak in tongues now. La Panda Zuzia. Le Copale Sudash. Le Papash Kapash. Zebe Panda Tias. Rabos. Seligapo. Rabamanas. Maleka Zuzia. Palatias. Shapoata. Let the spirit oh, grab open. This in this Let the gates open. And it's See the spirit. In the Let your ears open. Oh, Let your eyes open. Oh, God, this in this I command you. Oh, to Come into a castle.
Marina, those of you on this road, stretch your hands towards me. Zapaparatias. One like a parina. After the count of three, the Holy Ghost rests upon me. Holy Ghost one. Holy Ghost two. Holy Ghost three. Touch. 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 Those of you here, stretch your hands. Holy Ghost. Touch. Help them. Holy Ghost. Touch. Holy Ghost. Touch. Holy Ghost. Touch. Say the Pariata. Holy Ghost. Those of you here, say the Holy Ghost. Touch.
Be calm, be quiet for a minute. Hey. Kingdoms have been given to the church once again. Mantles have been given to the church once again. Mandates have been given to the church once again. For the kings to be born, for the mantles to be born. This one is for people that can catch it. For those who can lambano, it's not for everybody. There are things we inherited from God I want to give you. Some of us traveled many miles. We went through many heights in order to receive them. Oh my God. Lord, let the rivers flow. As many as can receive now, I open it. Let them access it, Lord. Let them access it, Lord. Take, 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 take. Drink of the waters. Ushers, be sensitive. I don't want people injured. Take. Let the rivers flow into your vessel. Such as you desire. Such as I have received of the fathers. I make available to you. Receive in the name of Jesus. Let it cover you like a canopy. Most of you be drenched in it. Be drowned in it. Let it flow like a river. Flow like a river. Flow like a river. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Access to mysteries. Access to insight. Let the vault of revelation open to you. The gate of insight. I ask you to open. The gate of insight. Open. 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 Receive the patriarchal mantles that we received of the fathers. Open to you. Open to you. Open to you. Open to you. What we have with God that doesn't make any ground hard. We enter. We scatter it. Let it fall upon somebody now. A mantle of power. A mantle of power. A mantle of power. It falls on somebody. It falls. It falls. It falls. Jesus, I see somebody entering into a well of inspiration. A well, a well, a well flooded with inspiration. Flooded with inspiration. Take it. Jacaboria, Senatali. Zozula Kabila Paraskatash. Receive, receive, receive. Drink, drink, drink. It's a river. It flows. It flows. There's a river that makes glad the city of God. It flows. It flows. It flows. It flows. Oh, Malata, I hear my spirit. Somebody is just partnering with an angel. An angel. A prophetic intercessor. A prophetic intercessor. Zatakabilas. Rapapash. 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 Zetokabilas. Zonto Patakiva. 
Lakuri ya Tatash. Oh, help them, ushers. Jegapaliga Pash. Blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with you. Spirit of the Lord, cover us with Your glory. Blow, blow, like a mighty wind. Spirit of the Lord, cover us with Your glory.
Bible said the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. Right now, under the anointing of the Spirit, I declare every yoke on your life, on your shoulders, that have beset you in your walk with God and in your progress in life, I command them in the name of Jesus, be broken. He said the hand of God came upon Elijah and he outran the chariots of Ahab. It's a mystery of speed in the kingdom. I declare that under this auction, may the hand of God make for speed in your life in the name of Jesus. Go and run ahead of your pairs. Overtake horses, overtake chariots. It doesn't matter the years that the caterpillar worm have eaten. The years that the canker worm have eaten. The years that the palmer worms have eaten. All the wasted years of your life. By the mystery of the anointing. I bring them back into your life. In the name of Jesus. He said Daniel and his friends. They were ten times better than their peers. Because of an excellent spirit. That was at work in them. I declare right now. In every endeavor of your life. Let there be the working of an excellent spirit in the name of Jesus. Receive, receive the spirit of excellence in the name of Jesus. Every mystery that we receive in Christ that is designed for our advantage, that is dormant in your life, I provoke it tonight. I demand, let there be an activation. In the name of Jesus. Those of you that your beginning have been small. From this day forward. I declare enlargement over your life. In the name of Jesus. Everyone that has been restrained. By family altars. Ancestral patterns. Causes. And obstructions. From their ancestry. At this point. I declare by the authority of the anointing. That let all those chains, let all those utterances, let all those energies be nullified in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. Go and subdue. Increase on every side. Rule in your world. Reign as kings forever. In the name of Jesus. And for everyone that have served in the course of this meeting. I declare that the Lord honor you. May the grace for honor come upon your life. Because you have served in the house of God. Men will serve you. In the name of Jesus. You will never be small. Everywhere you go to that you need favor to speak for you. I command the voice of favor to begin to minister on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. I declare that you are never small. You shall be ten times better than all your peers in Jesus name thank you father thank you lord give the lord a big shout of praise somebody shout glory shout glory you are God just we give you glory we bless your holy name for your love for your kindness for your mercies it is for your mercy Lord that we are not consumed and even as we congregate this morning to receive from the bounties of your spirit we ask that you will look upon us as a people that hunger and thirst after righteousness and that you will stretch forth your hand and suffice every one of us according to your riches in glory bless us this morning lord beyond measure by the instrumentality of your word bring us light bring us wisdom and cause us to be carried on the wings of your spirit even to the very depths of life so that as we depart lord we will go with the essence, the fervor, and the energy of your realm. 
to change our world for good. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. We give you praise. Take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. God bless you. This is a morning session. Let's keep it calm. <laughs> Let's keep it calm. Oftentimes, the temptation of swiftly tuning into the power of God is always there. Especially when the hearts of people are open. But like we received the charge from the president, it's the word of the Lord that orchestrates a transformation in the hearts of men. And every generation that is bereaved of the revelation of the word of God is a lost generation. It doesn't matter the move of the spirit or the dimensions they walk in. The word of God is the boundary of preservation for a generation. And the heritage of God is communicated to a generation through the instrumentality of his word. And so this morning, we'll be trusting the Lord to instruct us in his ways. So that the least one among us will become as strong as David. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Today, your conference is tagged the holy mountains. This morning, we are going to look at the definition of terms. It's um, by evening that I will look deeper into the dynamics of the tag for this conference. I will just take for granted that everybody knows what we are here for. And on the strength of that, bring some very quick definitions and then we'll go home and prepare our spirits for the evening service. The evening service will be an impartation service. Uh, you know, there are lots of things that we can communicate cognitively, but when you interact with spirits, it's the experience of their reality that translates to relevance. So if you don't touch the essence and the reality of a spirit, everything you know is just um, a cliche. And you may be very bold and proud about what you say. It will not translate to any difference on the landscape. So in the evening, we'll see how, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we will be communicating knowledge as a body of spirits. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, we'll look at the concept, and then we'll look at how we can journey into the place of the holy mountains and the spirit, and then we'll look at the operations that characterizes the holy mountain. We'll try to see what the holy mountain is, how to journey to the holy mountains of God, and then the operations of the spirit that characterizes the holy mountains. You know, it's important for you to understand certain concepts in the kingdom. Because if you don't understand them, you may waste your life thinking you are pleasing the Lord in the many activities that you do. If you don't understand very fundamental concepts in your dealings in the kingdom of God, you will waste your life. The walk with God is the walk of faith. But if that walk is not couched in understanding, it becomes a risk. Because you may journey to the end of the tunnel and discover you walked in the wrong direction and you wasted your life. We are in a generation where everything that is spiritual is characterized as an emotional operation. So a lot of people are deceived thinking because the emotional frequency is heightened and they have some experiences and they bask in the euphoria of the atmosphere. They feel it translates directly to spirituality. Yes, spirituality impacts the emotion. But it is not an economy that runs on the frequency of your emotions. The pillars and the blocks upon which the strength of your work with God is built must be well defined and the very facts of spirit realities must be very well defined before whatever you do can translate to meaning. Else you'll be taking a risk that you have not very well quantified. You see, spirits are not men. Their ways are different. So it's important for you not to walk with spirit on the strength of assumptions. 
your assumptions may look very logical and intelligent but that they are intelligent does not mean they are spiritual for example men consider love as affection and love is demonstrated by the exchange of affections and on the strength of our affection we can even furnish it with gifts but spirits have nothing to do with affection when they talk about love when you deal with spirit love is obedience so that we reveal to you how words are part the operations of men and spirit are your affection may become the greatest definition of your love but for a spirit the degree to which you love him is the degree to which you obey him so jesus said if you love me keep my commandments because he is talking from a height in zion that only the spiritual can discern that's why he said the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit of god because first of all they are foolishness unto him he said neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned that it sounds logical does not make it spiritual what makes it spiritual is the substance of life that is furnished from the holy ghost himself and everything that is void of the impartation of the holy spirit has no place in eternity you may carry it out with all your power but it will not strike a chord where it matters and even spiritual activities like prayer are useless if they are not couched in the realm of the spirit the name of jesus is useless if it is not demonstrated or released in the spirit your praise and your worship is useless if it is not conducted in the spirit what makes the difference is the realm from whence you are speaking and the one who furnishes the utterance that is why a lot of people run into all kinds of contradictions because the faith preacher comes to them and say if you say in the name of jesus the mountains will move but have you not checked that you have said the name of jesus for many years and your mountains are becoming bigger sometimes we go to god in our contradiction and we we honestly tell the lord we believe and truthfully we believe sometimes we can even risk our lives because we know we believe but why is there no difference because we don't understand that spiritual economies do not run on their reasonability they run on the strength of their spirituality and spirituality is a reality that is furnished by the holy ghost himself and carried out in the spirit the bible said in john chapter 4 verse 24 he said they that worship must worship the father in spirit and in truth you know preachers have interpreted that scripture to be worship in tongues it's not tongues if you look at the original translation it means to worship the father you must enter into the spirit and worship in the spirit that is the literal translation but very few understand the way to the spirit so we carry out spiritual activities in the flesh everything that is flesh is corruption if the name of jesus is altered in the flesh it's corruption if the word of god is quoted or ministered in the flesh it's corruption what animates the word and brings it to life is the spirit that is why the life of jesus is constantly characterized by spirit based operation jesus was the son of god full of authority but he did nothing in his authority the bible said in luke 4 14 that he returned in the power of the spirit in acts of the apostles chapter 1 verse 2 the bible said after that he had given commandment to the apostles by the spirit even the ministrations of jesus were in the spirit that's why he said in john 6 63 that the words i speak they are not intelligent words they are spirit and they are life so when jesus comes to you his goal is not to alter something that is novel his goal is to alter a word that is coming from the womb of the spirit you see the revival that is coming is going to be activated by the utterance of the spirit but because utterance have become the catalyst that the holy ghost wants to use for this revival a lot of people are out preaching the gospel in verbosious and very articulate english language it is not a function of english language utterance is a word that is energized by the holy ghost a word that is better from the womb of 
the spirit that is why when you hear a word that is an utterance it stirs hunger in your spirit it empowers your spirit and it quickens you to enter into the spirit everything jesus did was in the spirit a lot of people are sick and then they keep quoting by his stripes i'm healed i heard a strange word from benihim that shook the foundations of my faith he said that you it's in the bible does not mean it is yours you lay hold on it in the spirit before it is yours <laughs> people are quoting by his stripes they are healed and they die because they are quoting it in the flesh it's not real to them but they believe that by saying it over and over or getting emotional about it sometimes we even begin to cry and we shut down our reasoning and then we are nodding our head that you say it quick does not energize it until it becomes real and it can only be real in the spirit even the sacrifice of jesus having satisfied the claims of divine justice was not accepted the bible said in hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 that he after the eternal spirit it was offered he offered himself up by the eternal spirit jesus understood that without the holy ghost there is no reality that can be animated everything done outside the womb of the spirit has one name it's called flesh and the destination is corruption many christians don't know anything about the spirit when we speak about the holy mountains we are talking about the womb of the spirit we are not talking about a heat up we are talking about the place of the presence where the holy ghost and his reality have absolute authority for operation there are few christians there we are many in church but there are few in the spirit and that is why we talk a lot but very little happen we boast in the name of jesus but our life is a statement of a contradiction of the things that form the canons of our faith a man speaks so boldly about healing yet he's bastardized with sickness a man screams so much about the power of the holy spirit yes his life is 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 is, is, is a charade his life is a definition of waste a man speaks so much about righteousness but is a puppet in the hands of spirit every day of his life he lives in secret sins so there is a confusion in his life the things he believed and the things he has as his present our reality are worlds apart he cannot understand why the things he believed cannot become his reality the difference is the spirit until a man understands how to journey into the spirit his walk with god have not begun i want to show you this morning because the holy mountain is the presence is the presence it's not a hill talk he said in hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 he said "Thou have come to mount zion the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem it's not a scripture to quote it's an experiential location in the spirit and everyone who is supposed to be numbered among the saints should have a place in that experiential spiritual location if you have not come to that spot every activity you carry out in time will not appear in the radars of zion you know when you are at the airport the way you dictate the plane is that you check the dot the light appears like a dot in the radar if you can't see it in the radar it's not there even if it's coming there could be an accident in the airspace because it is not highlighted in the radar until you have come into the spirit what you are doing is not highlighted you may be leading worship and you have a golden voice and you are singing and you are crying what is happening is that the melody is the one touching your emotional cord when you enter the spirit the spirit will come alive And I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. I just want to be where you are. In your dwelling 
dwelling place forever. Take me to the place where you are. I just want to be with you. Some years ago, I listened to Bishop David Oedepo. I heard his messages. I could repeat and recite the whole messages. I scored these messages. I quoted the scriptures he quoted with the same kind of intensity. But nothing was happening. Lord, what is wrong? I collided with Apostle Romeo, sir. I will hear the man of God for eight hours. I came out. Those days, if I cough, you think it's Apostle Romeo. Every phrase, every sentence, his gesticulations, everything. But I will not have the experience. When I'm talking, people will be clapping and laughing. Wow, oh, this guy can speak English. Meanwhile, if Apostle speaks, people weep. There's hunger in their spirit. I say, what, where is this thing coming from? I mastered the ways in the mind. I was a man of the flesh. I didn't understand that this man spoke from the ambience of the presence. They were talkers from heaven. They were not people that speak on earth. Jesus said, the son of man, which is in heaven. He was walking in the streets of Galilee when he made the statement. He understood that nothing will move because he's the son of God. Everything will move because he is in the spirit. He made the spirit realm his hiding place. The man will leave a crusade very tired and you will hear Jesus run to the mountain. Sometimes the Bible will say he will drive everybody away including his disciples enter the ship and go to the other side why did he pursue the spirit so much that was his secret you know people say prayer is the secret prayer is not the secret Muslims pray and some pray more than you the Hindus pray and most of them pray far much more than you do the difference is the presence if the presence of the Holy Spirit is not a cardinal part of what you are doing you are only exercising yourself in the flesh the difference between your prayer and the prayer of the muslim man is the spirit of god not that you call the name of jesus because even demons call the name of jesus jesus i know paul i know who are thou so the name of jesus is not what makes the difference is the spirit in the name that makes the difference hope you remember jesus was called jesus from the day he was born but the bible said after the sacrifice of alignment was satisfied the claims of divine justice was met and he said the lord gave him a name that is above every other name something was added to the name of jesus it is the authority of the holy ghost the holy spirit is the one that animates the dimensions of god you can hear a message of a man and quote it people may call you names and you become famous you will have no impact on the landscape you will be in a church and you'll be sleeping with the people in the choir and all kinds of wardom will be going on even if you are righteous you will not be able to alter anything in their lives they will hear you every day but they will live in perpetual sin because what makes the difference is the animation of the spirit before you begin to bother yourself to know so much because there are many people saying a lot of things learn the way of the spirit first when you know the holy ghost he solves the problem you know people try to stand on pulpits and say a lot of things if god begins to announce you you'll be tired of preaching from monday till now this is my eighth ministration And as I'm rounding up from here tomorrow, I'll be in Joss for another three sessions before Sunday night. Preaching is not the focus. It's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Mountain is the womb of the Spirit. It's the place of the presence. Many don't know it. It will take a lot of yieldedness to the Holy Spirit to get there. And that leads me to talk about how to get to the presence. You don't get to the presence because you are born again. No, sir. We are all born again, but most of us are in the flesh. Legally, you have the right to the presence, but experientially, many are far. 
I want to keep it calm this morning to instruct you. So that you know what to begin to do consciously. Because most of us have become famous as choir heads. The whole campus, they know you. If they say worship, ah, if any big man of God is coming, you are the one. And that you heard a song and the song, you hear it so much and it's playing in your mind does not mean you are in the spirit. Your soul is a processor. So anything you hear over time, your soul begins to repeat it. They say there's a crusade that the Kumuye is coming. You are the one. Bishop David Oedepo is coming. You are the one. Apostle Aramon is coming. You are the one. That doesn't mean you are a spiritual person. You could be a very talented lady. And that you know how to exhort people. You pick this scripture, pick this scripture, pick this scripture. And then you phrase it in very intelligent utterance. It doesn't mean you are spiritual. You must be a man of the presence. To stand in the holy mountains of God. And it takes so much to get there. It takes so much, my brother, to get there. Very few find it in this life. Very few Christians walk in the presence. Very few. What do you do to get to the presence? The first thing you need to know is that the presence is not something you get to by your zeal. It is revealed. It's revealed. And you are carried. (laughs) <laughs> I know a lot of people you know I come from a place of prayer so most of the things we study see we have seen the practicals we have seen we have seen the practicals of most of the things we study there are times when we go to pray in tongues and we, we gauge ourselves at different hours what will happen if I pray in tongues straight for 3 hours, for 6 hours for 9 hours, for 12 hours for 15 hours, for 18 hours what will be the impact these are, they are the way you go and play football and you are learning leg over. That's how we exercise ourselves. We are a people of prayer. Where I come from. My friend Victor Obe, he can begin to pray very loud like this. And he will be walking like this for 18 hours. <laughs> it's not under your breath. Very in high intensity. And he will be moving like this for 18 hours. Sometimes we go for VG. <laughs> You know, when we're in the flesh, you know, you can be so much in the flesh in the place of prayer if the Holy Ghost is not at work. <laughs> you don't understand. When you experiment these things, you understand. You will humble yourself first because you know you are a man of the flesh. Go for vigil and then vigil is 10. <laughs> I will not call anybody's name for this one. I don't know who hear the message. Come by 6 p.m. and then begins to blast in tongue. <laughs> People around, maybe they will go and bath, come back. Some will go and eat. When it's 10, people are coming for VG. That's when the guy is adding gear. When the VG finished by 3, the guy is, is that time he's on gear 5. Then you see even the movement that time because his body, something else is at work in him. Then you go for the VG, you go and sleep and wake up around 10 in the morning. Then you are still hearing the voice. You will come back. After the VG, you will come and give him seed. Say, take, take. Something, there is something at work. In your life. Because you know that it is not within the regions of mortality to exert such capacity. It must have to be by the technology of a spirit working within him. And then most people see the guy flowing at that level of grace. And then when they come for prayer, they want to match. Then when they are praying, oh, 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 oh is a man running a rat race what he's doing is competition is of the flesh and some can go like that for six hours and they will maintain that schedule for months that's why prayer is not spirituality it's a walk with the spirit the herbalist is more spiritual than most of us the herbalist he understands the ways of his spirit the spirit he walks with he knows the things that pleases him he knows what to do for the realm to open for him he knows what to do to manipulate the protocols of the realm. But you who is a Christian, everything that behold, that attacks you or challenges you, you are lost. That is because the technology of the spirit is not at work. Even the voice of God cannot be heard unless in the spirit. That's why most of us walk by assumption. You say, I hear God when they are giving an open-ended word of knowledge. They come and uh, God is saying that uh, 
in this month um he, he wants us to pray there's a burden for prayer uh, let's pray because god wants to do something they just look at what is happening and bring assumption and say it's the voice of god then when they want to marry the person that has that has the voice of god that speaks to the whole fellowship now she wants to marry and then she doesn't know who god is saying <laughs> Fellowship when the power of God is moving, ooh, ooh, ah, that's it, the law, that's it, the law. But when there is a real challenge, say, What do you think about this? This one is one or two, it's not an open ended word of knowledge. Then you discover that um, the voice of God is scarce because there are few that know the path to the spirit. I can come here and start talking, and in 10 minutes, everybody is crying, screaming, and falling everywhere. But I came to realize it doesn't change people. the tangibility of your understanding is your security in your work with god if you don't have a definite understanding and apply your life to it you have taken a very terrible risk very terrible risk and many christians are living a life of great risk there are most in crisis today they go and cry before god and they have cried like that for six months nothing is happening won't you come back and say come wait how does this thing work how wait how does this thing work because at first you thought crying makes a difference you have cried for days and the cancer is growing the kidney infection is increasing how does this thing work people deceive themselves a lot and they think they please god how do you journey into the presence first is that what it is revealed and you are carried. The psalmist said, Quicken us, O Lord, that we may call upon your name. So the prayers that strike a chord in the realm of the spirit is a prayer that comes by the quickening of the Holy Ghost. Quicken us. Quicken us. They are not shouting in tongues and why they are speaking in tongues. When everybody's voice go down, then they announce, okay, at least this people are going to say, we know be equal. We know be mate. <laughs> That's somebody who is praying, no? <laughs> they were speaking in tongues. Bo, 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 bo. Many people were shouting. So, he was there. When everybody got tired, they announced, okay, at least now they will know we are not equals. That's the man who has been praying in tongues for three hours. He said, he's in the flesh. He's not quickened. Quicken us that we may call upon your name. <laughs> ah, I wish Christians would just settle down and learn basic things. Basics. Learn basic things and just begin to apply it every day. Your life will change radically. Radically. I know a lot of people who hunger to talk things, bogus things about. If we could settle down. You know, this is the morning session. So, in the evening, I will not be like this. In the evening, I will actually come with a garment of fire. That one, let me tell you ahead of time. I will come in the fullness of a revivalist. But this morning, I need to share some things with you because I may not have the opportunity again. Some of you think prayer is spirituality. So, you pray in the flesh for many years. It doesn't make a difference. And that brings me to the second thing. To be carried, you must be surrendered. When you pray, the first thing you do in the place of prayer is to surrender. Else you will pray in the flesh for a long time. And you will strengthen your will. That's why the hardest people for God to talk to are those who pray. They believe they hear God. And you look at most of them, they are walking in error. But they can never hear. The hardest people to counsel are the people that say they are spiritual. The journey into the spirit is a journey of surrender. Because in this mountain, you will be carried there. You labor in the flesh. The Bible said the labor of the foolish wearies every one of them. Because they know not to enter the city. The reason your process takes long is not because process lasts for 10 years. It's not because process lasts for 15 years. And it's not because process lasts for 3 years. There's no formula to it. It is when you yield that your process ends. When you learn the way of surrender, that's when your process ends. 
the journey through the wilderness was supposed to be for 11 days it lasted for 40 years because the people will not bend their neck the bible said they were a people of a stiff neck so wilderness is not the idea of god wilderness is a product of rebellion to be taught the ways of the spirit they do not notice that everybody that went to the wilderness the whole generation perished because they had an evil heart it was only caleb and joshua that came out every other person that made it was born there they didn't know the ways of egypt see christian wilderness wilderness process is not time based process is obedience based if you are not you dead your own process will be 20 years so don't bring your process as a doctrine i don't want to hear it because what god is using you to do somebody else was used for six months But in Nigeria here, because of our arrogance, most times it takes an average of 10 years. <laughs> because the guy will not hear. He will never hear. He will never hear. He wants to move in power. <laughs> Come for meeting. The Holy Ghost say, calm down. Tell the people about my love. But everybody heard of him. They came. How will they come? And then he will not move in power. And then, Holy Ghost, move, move. Then Satan is wise. He will inspire a lot of things to happen. And then one or two people fall down. And they are shaking everywhere. And they say he's an apostle of power. Well, the last time I read the Bible, power is not a product of people falling down. There are threefold operation of power. One is deliverance from the, de the power of the devil. Two is healing. Three is working of miracles. Four is faith. So that you're meeting that 30 people fell down. How many people were healed of tangible infirmities? How many were delivered from the powers of the devil? And many months we came back and we say this one was an immoral person but now she's burning because the transforming power went into that person and broke the cords of darkness rebellious generation we are so arrogant because there are books available online messages online we read this message hear this one and then we come to say it and then you see a 10 year a 10 year old boy come on facebook and is challenging benny <laughs> you think spirituality is about knowledge it's about experience how much of god have you experienced <laughs> hey, hey, that thing bishop where they go say it's wrong how can he say that come on come on let me respect these people but come on man come on man and this guy has never read the bible he doesn't even have the discipline to sit down and read the bible he heard one quote from one man heard another quote from another. <laughs> we need to be helped <laughs> We need to be helped. That's why the way of surrender is scarce. It's difficult in our time. There are many who don't know how to surrender. The Holy Ghost, we hold them on the neck. Oh, not you can't walk. You can't be relevant with God. Because relevance is not even a function of what you are doing on earth. What you are doing on earth could be by the agency of a devil. They come to him. They say, we walk miracles in your name. He say, away from me, walkers of iniquity. So the devil can help you to carry out miracles. They are called lying wonders. Even what you call casting out devils, there is exorcism. Where demons can cooperate with themselves <laughs> to deceive you and make you feel you are healing a, a deliverance minister. So you came, you say, get out. The demon will tell, just go, just go. Meanwhile, he has bound you in perpetual immorality. So you are living immorality to say, but I'm casting out devils. Come on, the anointing is working. You don't know that demons are cooperating to put you in bondage so that you will never amount to anything in God. <laughs> the way of surrender. For you to be popular among the immortals on earth, you must be completely broken. <laughs> he said, As a prince, thou have power with God and have prevailed. How did he become a prince? Not because he was a custodian of the Abrahamic blessing, he became a priest because he was broken. The guy was blessed before he left the house. But when he encountered the angel of the Lord, they wrestled all night. When his flesh was dealt with, he now realized that even though the blessing legally, legally was already spoken over him, he had no apprehension of it. He now said, I won't let you go until you bless me. That's why most of us have power will never manifest it. And the angel touched his table and broke it. That was from the day the man leaned on his staff. He needed a support. The day he began to lean on a support, 
and his confidence moved from himself that day in heaven he became a prince his coronation came on the strength of his brokenness as a prince thou hast power with god and have prevailed is the journey into the spirit realm is the journey of surrender you know that you are born again doesn't mean you are there the only thing that was revealed to you when you got born again was the resurrected jesus so it's the revelation of the resurrection that implants immortality in your spirit that's why at salvation you were not asked to go and repent from all your sins they just told you to believe that jesus rose from the dead and that was what you confessed that means you believe that in jesus there is power over death and on the strength of your faith in the immortality of jesus the same economy is communicated into your spirit the reason most times you go for crusade and they say come and rededicate your life is because at salvation you actually carried out two confessions the first confession you carried out was the confession of the immortality of jesus that's the resurrection the second confession is the confession of the lordship of jesus one is once and for all the other you will repeat it many times because in the area of every area of disobedience when you realize the lordship of jesus you confess him again and then you surrender again the day you got born again immortality was planted in your spirit but your soul was rebellious so as you go the holy ghost say don't lie again then you say lord you go and say don't fornicate again you say lord you go and say don't steal again you say lord you go and say begin to fast and pray you say lord so the confession of the lordship is perpetual that's why repentance is after remission of sin every time you bow again from your old way you are confessing the lordship of jesus it's a journey of continuous surrender because there will be a progressive instruction of the holy ghost coming in your direction if you are healthy in the spirit unless you are not healthy if you are healthy you will keep here the bible said daring is the righteousness of god revealed from faith to faith so as you go deeper in the kingdom you will receive new laws maybe the day you give your heart to christ eating in the morning is not a crime but now god is confirming responsibility on you so it will be a sin for you to eat that is not a doctrine it's organic life it's relationship that's why samuel say i will not sin against the lord by not praying for you for samuel if he doesn't pray for israel it's a sin because therein is the righteousness of god revealed there is the general righteousness of god and there is an ordination based righteousness because you are a prophet god will tell you you will pray every night for you to be accurate with god you must pray every night that one is so that the weight of your calling can manifest is the journey of surrender the journey of surrender many don't know it that's why we are arrogant but when you find it you become a prince you pursue men of god you think that's the way it's a lie the best thing a man of god has to give you is the precepts of god even if he gives you everything God has given him, you will not walk in it until you bow to the precepts of God. If you have not learned the way of obedience, you can't walk in it. That was why Paul lived with Timothy. He anointed him. The presbytery laid hands on him. But he told him to fan it to flame. He gave him instructions to bring those things to pass. The whole presbytery that represented the government of the church in their day, they laid hands on Timothy because it was obvious that everything God had in mind. Timothy was the one to carry out that heritage to the next generation. It was not in doubt that he was the lead among every other young person rising. At the age of 17, he was ordained the bishop of Ephesus. Hands were laid on him, gifts were imparted, but it will never manifest until he learns the path of surrender. The journey of surrender is the journey into kingdom relevance, but very few find it. As a prince, thou has power with God. The revelation you received on salvation is the revelation of the resurrected Christ. If that is all you have, you will never walk in the presence. My best teacher in this topic is Benihim. Oh, bless Benihim. He will use the tabernacle to illustrate the journey of the presence. The journey. The Holy Ghost reveals Jesus for you. You give your heart to Christ. Then the next thing you meet in the tabernacle is the altar of sacrifice. The altar of sacrifice, sacrifice reveals the cross. The cross speaks only one language. Death. Death to flesh. Everything.
thing that is of the old creation the cure to it is the cross the old creation can never journey into god it must pass through a junction in the spirit called the cross it's when the old creation journeys into the cross that a new man is born it's the cross that places a continuous demand on the flesh to die and if you carry the garbage of flesh you cannot travel deep enough to touch the presence when the revelation of the cross comes to you it is twofold the first fold shows you the dimensions of iniquity and the possibilities of the fall so it orchestrates repentance in your spirit a man who has not been given the revelation of the cross doesn't repent most of the thing we call repentance is in the flesh that's why we are telling god that we not lie again the next person you speak to you lie you are telling god that we not fornicate again the next time you visit the boy you fornicate because you confessed in the flesh there's no repentance in the flesh repentance is an economy that is only operational in the spirit and that happens when you are convicted it is when the revelation of the sacrifice of jesus on the cross is revealed to you that conviction can come into your spirit and until a man is convicted he can't repent that's why most of us live in sin perpetually because when you repent the power of sin is broken but it comes when the revelation of the cross is given to you do you see why we depend on god every day because in this kingdom you don't have any way to shine anything called shining is in christ you can't shine in this kingdom the realm is designed such that you can never take credit for anything so we latch on to the holy spirit we are fasting and praying the goal is not to fast for 10 hours for 21 days the goal is not to pray in tongues for 15 hours the goal is to apprehend the holy ghost what is what are you saying if he has not spoken for three days the prayer continues because the target is not time it's good to pray for long it exercises your spirit but the focus is the spirit himself you are there until he speaks you hold on to him because if the holy ghost does not reveal the cross the preacher may quote all the scriptures about the cross you may memorize it and quote it but you may still be living in sin and quoting by his stripes i'm healed the chastisement of my peace was upon him but you are thinking about immorality in your heart because you are a being you are not a puppet if you were a puppet or a robot we could program you with instructions but you are a being so you flow by life and until the holy ghost reveals reality to your spirit life cannot flow it is the revelation of the cross this is the journey into the presence many don't have it because they are too full of themselves when you surrender to the holy ghost then he begins to show you the protocol of the mountain he said who shall come to the mountain of god who shall stand upon his holy hills him that have not lifted off his heart in vanity whose hand is of a clean hand and a pure heart how do you make your heart pure what economy has the power to make your heart pure you can choose to become a monk today don't go out again don't look at a woman and meditate for 15 years you will still be iniquitous because what is affecting you is first of all in nature before it is an act and only the holy spirit sustains the power to join into the nature and he configures it because it was by him that were designed is the revelation of the cross you see why in christianity our root is deeper than the tree we travel deep on the ground before we manifest <laughs> if you jump up and begin to shout you have no root even satan will leave you first when you become popular then he will shoot you and then you become a public ridicule to the name of god and the body of christ don't rush to shout allow the holy ghost announce you because the holy ghost announce finished products have you seen a company <laughs> oh my goodness the revelation of the cross it deals with the flesh and when the holy ghost is done with that then it carries you to the liver it is in the liver that the holy ghost is rubbed into you he washes you he purges you he renews you that's when oneness and intimacy begins you know most of us that follow the instruction of the holy ghost don't do this don't do this and we are looking at him for help sometimes you do that thing until you are tired you have you, you don't enjoy intimacy yet because intimacy is not a protocol that happens when you are obeying in obedience you cry because the flesh is being judged when you begin to satisfy the demands of surrender then the holy ghost begins 
to allow the texture of his reality to rub off on you. That's when God gives you an instruction, you are happy. Eh? They say, empty your pocket and give us an offering. And then you say, thank God. How do you imagine that the apostles were beaten and flogged and they came back giving glory to the Lord that they were counted worthy to be flogged in the name of Jesus? See, something has happened to the flesh. Priorities have changed. Ambitions have changed. Value systems have changed because their nature has been altered. When you want to kill them, they will look at you and say, please, when you crucify me, don't face my head up because my Lord was faced up. Face me down. <laughs> Is the walking of the cross. Now they say, hey, God say, go to Medugri. Say, hey, hey. no, I didn't hear God. Medugri. <laughs> you have not seen the cross. So you are still living for yourself. You still have ambitions that you carry like an egg and you preserve it with all your life. Say, marry this man. Say, okay, this man. The person I want to marry is tall and fair. Mm -mm, it can't be this man. God will speak again. <laughs> you cannot be popular among the immortals. The way of the cross. He deals with the flesh. And when you satisfy that claim of obedience, then you begin to sense the Holy Spirit. That's when you go to the place of prayer and prayer becomes sweet. Others are checking the time to pray for four hours. You are there, you say, Holy Father. And the next time you open your eyes in the night. Meanwhile, you knelt down around 8 a.m. What has happened? The Holy Ghost is rubbing into you. It's rubbing, it's rubbing into you. That's where you are touched. Your proclivities are beginning to wash away. You know, before you enter the Holy of Holies, all of these things must happen to you. The flesh must die because it's not a place where you transact on the strength of flesh. You must be sanctified because Him, the Bible said, Thou, O God, art of a purer eyes. Your eyes cannot behold iniquity. So you must be washed by the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit. Sanctification is not a function of rules. It is intimacy with God. He washes you off. Jesus said the words I have spoken, they've washed you. By what means? Because the words I speak, they are spirit. They are life. It is the systems of the liver. And when you enter into the, the inner court, the menorah is there. And then the altar of shoe bread is there. And then the altar of incense is ahead of you. When you interact with these three things, you can enter the presence. Do you see that the presence is more difficult than the move of power? That's why most people move in power in disobedience. Have you not come to that point where you do what you want to do and you know it's not the will of God? Then you go back and you are crying. Hey, God, forgive me. God, for you were moving in power. When you want to move in the presence, you must have perfect obedience. The gate is the revelation of the resurrected Christ. The, the, the altar of sacrifice is the revelation of the cross. The lava is the revelation of the sanctification or the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit. The altar of shoe bread is the revelation of the word. That's when you open scriptures, it becomes sweet. You can sit down and hear messages for 10 hours. What is happening? You want to eat, you can't stand up. The thing is sweet. In Jeremiah 15, 16, he says, I found thy word. I did eat them. And they became the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Suddenly, you read the scriptures... You, you, you are digging. You are digging a good mine. You are digging. It's not that every morning I will read five scriptures. It's good. Discipline is good. Because before you get to that point where the Holy Ghost can hang you up, you need discipline to keep up. Because if you allow your system open and porous, the devil will take advantage. And if you get distracted, you are gone. If you don't make reading of the Bible a habit or prayer a lifestyle, Facebook will replace it. And from Facebook, you, it will become pornography. And from pornography, it will become three boyfriends. And then it will become abortion. And it will become dead. So discipline is good. We don't talk down on discipline. But we are telling you that beyond rules is an organic life. Because the children of Israel obeyed these rules for 1,500 years. There was no life. The systems of the presence. The presence. At the altar of shoe bread, the word of God is revealed. You know the word of God. That's when you don't just come because you use the concordance to gather the scriptures accordingly and then you are quoting it the way you crammed it. No. When you are flowing, the word of God will flow out of you like a river. I had my message there, but as I'm standing here, I'm flowing by inspiration. The things I'm telling you, I didn't premeditate it. 
you have interacted with the word of God. The Holy Ghost has brought you to the altar of shoe bread. The word has become real. That's when the ideologies of your ancestors will no longer have authority over you. Let me tell you something. You can still be a Christian and be a slave of spiritual patterns. Spiritual altars are dealt with by the cross. But spiritual patterns will continue. Because spiritual patterns are programs that are facilitated by rebellious spirits. So even though cross is not supposed to be part of you, sickness is not supposed to be part of you, a demon can force it. So there is no legal base in the spirit, but because they are rebellious, they will keep doing it until you fight them out. That's why when we go to cast out devils, we just command them. Because we know they don't have any legal basis. Hope you know demons were not casted out in the Old Testament. They were legal grounds. At best, you exorcise them and use songs and sounds to, 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 to draw their attention away. But in the New Testament, there's no legal ground. So we rebuke them, we cast them out. But if you don't have the revelation of the word of God in your spirit, demons will still play over your life. So the system of the presence is the system of absolute dominion in the world. It brings you into absolute dominion. The word of God becomes real. The gate reveals the resurrected Christ. The altar of sacrifice reveals the cross. The lava reveals the sanctifying power of the Holy Ghost. The altar of shoe bread reveals the word of the Lord. And then the menorah. He reveals to you the mind of God. The will of God for your life. That's when at first you join the fellowship. You love singing. But now you have a personal walk with God. And suddenly you begin to know that you are a, you are a prophet. So the sounds you are hearing is not just to sing. Those sounds, they are transport system. So suddenly when you hear sound now, you are not in a rush to write a song. And go and sing in the church. If you start hearing sound, you step back and you shut the door. You know an encounter is coming. Because the sound comes to suck you into the spirit realm. And every time you follow that sound, suddenly an angel appears. Then you now realize that, oh, the will of God for me is a prophet. Oh, <laughs> if I pastor, you understand what I'm saying. 90% of people that meet you, they'll say, what does God want me to do? They don't have a relationship with him. If they begin to practice the presence, questions of callings are not questions to ask. Did you read anywhere in the Bible where the Bible says God told the disciples that they will be apostles? Suddenly, in Acts chapter 2, they began to introduce themselves as apostles. What happened? They have journeyed far enough to discover who they were. Where did you read in the Bible? <laughs> it was in the Old Testament that God will say, I'm making you a prophet. In the New Testament, we walk into it. We walk and then we find ourselves. Ah, I'm not an evangelist. I'm a leader. My place is in the government. So as I'm walking my way through the government, I know I'm a witness of Zion. Because I have journeyed to the menorah. I know the mind of God concerning my life. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He didn't say, I know the words I wrote concerning you. If you don't journey until the illuminated dimension of the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you can't find and factor the mind of God for you. And hope you know that your calling and your destiny is peculiar to you. You will not find it by reading the Bible. It's not there. They didn't say Titus is a prophet. Or Timothy is an apostle. It's not written there. That one you'll find it if you journey to the point of the menorah. Then the Lord reveals to you, this is my mind towards you. You will even journey until God will say your right hand have been anointed with power. Anytime you sense the hand vibrating in the meeting, lift it, the healing anointing is there. So you can come for a healing service and you are playing. You are just you are somebody else who does not know. He will need to open every scripture that talks about healing to build the faith of the people. But you you come for healing service, you'll just be playing or you'll be worshiping. When your right hand begins to move, you don't need their faith. The power for healing have come. You know what is at work, it's organic life. I went for Benny Hinn's conference. They were just worshipping. He was teaching. He finished teaching. He started worshipping. He said the power has not hit the building. The man knew when the, that second when the power comes. And instantly begins to command demons. And you see people rising from witches. He said at one point in Ohio. He went for a crusade. He just walked into the building. And 43 cripples rose from which year. 40, not one, not two. 43 cripples rose from which year. He, he was so saturated with who he was. He knew it. You know, sometimes we are motivated. So when five people tell you you are an apostle, they now come and tell you, 
three prophets have confirmed it. But there's no knowing on their inside. Even if the whole prophet in the world gather together in one stadium and say, you are an apostle, you will not walk in it until it is illuminated in your spirit by the menorah. It's the journey of the presence. That's how you come to the holy mountains where you wield the powers of God. There are few that can wield the hand of God because very few of us travel in the spirit. The illuminating powers of the spirit. By the time you get to that point, that's when you can worship God. You know, worship is not singing. Singing helps your soul to align. But worship is actually the transference of the substance of glory on your inside to God. Everything God puts in you that makes his essence real to you, you surrender it back to him. That's why sometimes in the place of worship you are crying. That's why sometimes in the place of worship you are making sacrifice. It's a statement that everything that makes me relevant is yours. You open up yourself to God again so that the spirit man can give praise. In the heavens where the elders worship God, they did it by lying down and casting their crown. Their throne and their crown are the signatures of the authority in the heavens. But when worship begins, they cast all of those things away. These are technologies in the spirit. Did you not notice, those of you that sing, there are some chords you can never strike until you bend. Because that thing is deep. You must have to stretch backward until it flows out of you. It is a release of essence the release of glory as a sacrifice before the throne of god if you have not come to the point where your flesh is disarmed the will of god is revealed and the intimacy of the of of the walk of the spirit within you is activated your spirit can't worship god most of the things we call worship are exercised in the flesh that's why the lady is leading worship all she's trying to do is to turn her hair like this so that you see the long hair she made from the salon yesterday she is still conscious of everybody seeing. The guy is on the altar worshiping. He sacks his throat like this. And then he's doing like this. As he's, he's checking out the people who are admiring him. And he says, worship. You don't know what you are doing. When you worship, you die. Everything flesh dies. The first time a man worshiped God in the Bible was Genesis 22 verse 5. Abraham was giving up his only prized Joel. Priceless Joel. Isaac. He was going to offer Isaac. And in Genesis 22 verse 5, he said, wait at the foot of the mountain and we go and worship. Do you know how to climb the mountains? <laughs> it's not stones and bricks you hold to climb. It's surrender. You surrender. Everything that gives you value, you surrender. Because it's a statement of absolute trust. That if my whole vulnerability is presented before God, I'm still certain that he is the one that holds the key to my life. And I will never be relevant until he speaks concerning me. It's the way of relevance. The journey to the mountain is the journey of relevance. Because it's a traffic into the presence of God. But very few find it. Very few find it. Most of us are still full of ambition. And then we come, we say God wants to use us to change the world. Which world? The world that is your taskmaster. They didn't all read in the Bible. Everybody God used to change the world. He first of all separate him from the world. Because the world that disciple you, you can't change it. He is your master. In Luke 1 8, he said the child John was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto Israel. If he is trained by the system, how can he correct the system? He is thinking like the system, he's talking like the system. His belief system is built by the system. So God separates you first. In Mark 3 14, he said he called them to be with him that he may send them. How do you change the world that is your disciple? You don't know why most times men of God are separated and isolated. It's not a show of pride. Because they know that if the world enters them, they can be contaminated. Nobody is immune to contamination. That's why we hide in the spirit. Jesus finished a crusade. He runs to the mountain. He ministers to people. He runs to the mountain. He wants to eat. He says, you people go and buy. He stays alone. You think he's a... Uh, and act in the flesh that's the only way to survive your soul has been opened on account of the fall you guide it with all diligence you guide it 
is the Holy Ghost that carries us. But we must master the way of yieldedness. The way of absolute surrender is the key into the mountains of God. Who shall ascend unto the mountains of God? Who shall stand upon his holy years? Him who has not lifted up his heart in vanity. Whose hand is pure? See men full of flesh talking about spiritual things. Because you heard Apostle Arume say it, you think. Go and say the same thing now. I was in a meeting where Reverend Dr. Omar Pai was saying something. <laughs> oh boy, this man have seen things. A young man came and challenged him. Say what? Is it me you spoke to? He said, okay, look around you. Today is your last day. Just appreciate the word. Anything you want to see, see it now because you will not see it tomorrow again. <laughs> and then you go and say, God cannot kill. The guy was crossing the road. A trailer ran into him and plumped. <laughs> Why? The man said, take a good look around you. You will not see this thing again. This is the last day you are seeing it. <laughs> is God having power with God? It's the way of the mountain. You don't know the holy mountains, but get about authority. It's not for you. I don't pray and pursue power. What I strive to do every day is to be in the center of God's will. If my obedience is complete, I know I can avenge other disobedience. These are the wisdom that the fathers know. You are again, Lord, give me power. Lord, give me power. Power to heal the sick. Power to raise the dead. Meanwhile, when Adebo in his I say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then he comes out and as he stands in the stadium like this, even if they say Adebo is coming, the whole stadium is packed without flyers. What is at work? He understands the dynamics of organic reality. You don't know. It. These men died. They died. Many times they cried. Some were crying. They said, Lord, don't show me mercy. Break me. Break me. Because I'm the greatest enemy of my future. I must come to a point where I completely learn the way of absolute reliance. Bishop Oedipo called it total abandonment. We believe it's about powerful words. So as you are coming for the meeting, you are charging. You talk, 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 talk. When you are talking, people are looking like this. You say, come and give your heart to Christ. Somebody is checking Facebook. Everything you have been saying for two hours. It didn't, even, <laughs> it didn't mean why Peter stood up and just told them the story that all of them knew. And the Bible said their hearts were pricked. This was the story they all knew. But their hearts were pricked. He spoke from the womb of the spirit. The system of the presence. I listened to Benihim preach this message. I heard it again and again. I will go and lie down. Many years ago. And then yesterday while we were coming from Ibenidium. The lady played it again. I said, what message is this? Send it to me. These were the things that made me. <laughs> These were the things that made me. When men are pursuing men and pursuing things, pursue the Holy Ghost. Stay with him. It will be boring at first, but stay there. A time will come when it will become fascinating. Because someday you will go to stay and then light will come out from the wall. And then you look. Is there a door here? You will just wake up. And then as you woke up, you see an elder walk out of the wall. And then he's talking to you. And while he's talking, you wanted to answer. Then your spirit comes out of you and stands before him. And your spirit is talking to him, but you, 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 are, you are here. And you woke up the next day and you are full of wisdom. And then people say, oh, but which book do they read now? You say, okay, these are the books I read. Take. They'll go and read the whole book and become more foolish. <laughs> you, journey, you, show, you enter the city. You enter the city in Zion. Because this man died. The only thing that blocks you from entering God's presence is your flesh. But when it's completed, then you enter into the presence. It is the road map to the presence. The path of surrender. That's where flesh dies. That's where your ambition dies. Your pride dies. Some people come from it. I, yesterday I preached in a place where the crowd was heavy. But I'm not moved because you are not much. It's not about what you are thinking. Luke sat down and wrote the whole gospel of Luke and sent to one person. His name is called Theophilus. As if that was not enough, he sat down again and wrote the whole story of Acts of the Apostles and sent to the same person. Have you read the book of Luke and Acts before? Some people have never read it. 
because he's a body. A man sat down and wrote the whole book to send to one person. <laughs> they understood the values that were in the mind of the father. The one person that God troubles you to pray for for six months. Others are going for crusade. Your friends are being known as apostles. So you go and open a Facebook page and put Apostle Victor. That page will be there for 10 years before you have three likes. <laughs> they have me to say, oh boy, I beg. Make I just give five minutes charge. When you are giving charge, that's when all the relevant people will not come. As you are dropping the mic like this, then somebody just walks in. And then the next person that comes and says, glory to Jesus, then they say, please, can you come and minister in Lagos? Meanwhile, you were giving charge, talking Raymond. The man didn't come. The moment you dropped the mic, that was where the man came. And he was looking for a missionary in Africa. And your friend that just came and said, yes, God is helping us. He said, please come, let's go to the U.S. You go for another meeting. They finish preaching your message. You say, let's put it on YouTube. You now put it on YouTube. And you even sponsored it on Instagram. And after three weeks, you come and check. There are two views. <laughs> in this kingdom, it's God that announces men. And it's only men that die that God announces. Because it is his life that makes the difference. When you are full of flesh, you are powered by another kind of life. It's the way of the presence. When you come into the presence, that's where I want to begin my message from. Oh, but I still have 30 minutes. Okay, I have 30 minutes. What happens in the presence? What happens in the presence? Everything you have been struggling to do in the flesh, that's what happens in the presence. Stay the next person. You want to raise the dead, it's in the presence. Everything you have been laboring to do in the flesh is what happens in the presence. Hallelujah. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh, fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You know, I love this song so much because every time I sing it, it reminds me that God is a king. <laughs> you know, what will make you relevant in eternity is not because God is your father. What will make you relevant in eternity is because God is a king. You know him as a king and as a judge. Because in the world to come is a kingdom. And sons are not rewarded. Sons are the heirs of that world. But reward is given to priests and kings. <laughs> have you not noticed that your father will not give you the car to drive even though there are 10 cars in the house you grow up first when you begin to take responsibility then your father gives you the whole wheel that thing was yours when you were born but it's when you grow up that it was wheeled to you those who know God as father they can go and sin tomorrow and come back and say Lord have mercy and God will forgive them they will sin again and say Jesus have mercy and Jesus will forgive them they will fornicate and say, God! And God will forgive them. But in eternity, they will be babes wearing pampas. The kingdom is not for babes. They err. So long as he's a child, different nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. I try to know him every day as a king and as a judge. Because I know as a judge, he will just judge rightly. You will not be judged unto condemnation because the judgment of condemnation is on the cross. But whether you and I will be big in eternity depends on our works. Joshua Selman said something. The great apostle of Jesus. He said in Christ we are all equal but it's our sacrifice that makes the difference. 
you are mighty on your throne you reign you ancient zion's king cry out kadosh you are mighty on your throne you don't know how men become big they are men of the presence it's only men of the presence that are mighty in the kingdom Bishop Oedipo is a lion. You see, we talk about revival and many things that God wants to do. The territories that we are still talking and making boast of in the north, it was men like Oedipo that conquered it. How many revivals is going on in Sokoto and Medjugorje because the impact of his ministry was in, in Kaduna? These were the men that conquered those land because they were lion. Some years ago, he bought a land and the talks came say nobody will enter the land. He said if anybody steps into that land, he will be struck with irrecoverable madness. The next day by 10 a.m., three people were already mad. They ran away. They were they are lions. Men like WF Kumuye stood up and he screamed an alarm of holiness. And in his days, when he rained and shined like the sun. You couldn't even give a job to anybody. Those days they want to give job, they look for deeper lifers. You don't apply, they trust them. Because a man understood the systems of holiness. They are men of the mountain. You think things just happen? I sat on that Apostle room and he spoke. And then all my lost died. He didn't do a Bible study, he only gave a charge. How can a man deposit God in you so much? You came as a liar and suddenly you left. There's no discipline. Everything dies. They are men of the presence. Reverend, please walk towards a sick person and the cancer will go down. How is it possible? They are men of the presence. If Apostle Selma enters here now, he's a, mo he's a router. The man is a router. If he comes here now, there are many spiritual possibilities that will be happening on their own accord because Selma is around. You enter his meeting, things are happening even when he's not talking. They are men of the presence. It's not about the scriptures you know. People are joking, playing around with their lives. Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You are, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. I made up my mind that even if it's five minutes of my clip you will hear, you will not sin again fire will engulf you I, I will die to everything that is flesh in my days it will be heard that men fear the Lord you will hear you can't every demon that holds you down will run away there will be hunger strange you cannot explain it suddenly you will pray without ceasing I don't know what you pursue but me I want to be popular among the immortals I want to be popular in the region of Zion so that when I show up I will walk in eternity like an immortal I will not be a colossus on the earth in eternity they will call me a patriarch have dead and vain priorities men of the mountain it's on the mountain that the will of god is apprehended on the mountain hey hush i wish i had time do not commit anything serious to your life until you can climb the holy mountains nothing serious can be committed to you if you like quote all the scriptures and talk big motivate yourself motivational speaking cannot move you in this kingdom in Luke chapter 9 verse 26 to 34 that was when the kingdom was handed over to Jesus it was on the mountain so six days later he carried peter james and john and they went there as he prayed the faction of his countenance was altered they appeared before him moses and elias and they talked with him what were they talking about the death in jerusalem that was when the will of the father was made known to him that for you to fulfill the claims of divine justice you must die and where you will die is in jerusalem you will not die in Galilee. You will not die in Nazareth. It's in Jerusalem. And you will die the death of the cross. That was when the testament of the law and the testament of the prophet was handed over to the kingdom. Because he climbed the holy mountain. He stood there and he would not come down if it took 10 years. You run to prayer. 
about 10 minutes you think it's about time to apprehend the mind of God what will God have you do you follow people and think they will give definition to your destiny who told you men make men the mind of God why was Moses so strong this guy had body to deliver Egypt Israel he knew that Israel was supposed to be delivered this is the time but he didn't know how to go about it he went killing the Egyptian how many Egyptians will you kill in a lifetime and even if you kill all the Egyptian who told you God want them to live in Egypt the destination was not Egypt the body drove him until he went to the backside of the mountain the Bible said he came to Horeb the mountain of God that was where God showed up and began to give him the blueprint of his will for Israel the strategy was to challenge Pharaoh the empowerment was a rod in his hand and the mandate was to take them to the promised land there was no way he would have known it until he ascended the holy mountains some of you are aware what god wants you to do you are saying yes i think god you will think all your life you can never stumble on the strategy until you come to the mountain and hear the voice of god because the voice comes with the empowerment and it comes with the mandate john said the one that sent me the same said unto me the one that sent me there is no missing word about it the same said unto me upon whoever the spirit descend and rest he is the messiah he knew his mandate was to identify the messiah the strategy was baptism so he was not baptizing because he learned a new way he had it he had it he had it why because he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto israel he was there until the day so for him prayer is not an act you carry out and come back prayer is the life you are sentenced to until god leads you funny thing we do call christianity the will of the father it's on the mountains that the encounters of your destiny are many are trusting god to reveal things to them things are not revealed on land they are revealed in the spirit have any encounter in this life walking in the flesh everybody that had an encounter with god had it in the spirit even at the worst moment of their life this guy had mastered the way of the spirit until that was the only way they lived john was sentenced from civilization to die frustration nothing was working you not even talk about family they had none at this time everything they were dead to everything but even in partners to say i was in the spirit on the last day that was when he was carried to heaven to show him all the dimensions of heaven there were things shown to john that the, the angel told him don't or tight when the seven voices spoke that one by reason of privilege he's the only man that know it in all eternity the encounters of your life they are on the mountains of god you don't journey to the mountain for gate your life will be a puzzle a stream of trial and error and you will end up an average person the greatest crisis of life is to know that you were born great but end up small every day you will weep that's why most people retire and they die after three days when they were young they knew they were going to rule the nation but they live for 65 years and upon retirement they ended up as custom officers they ended up without impact they knew the impact they were supposed to carry out they didn't carry it out so every day they sit outside their life is full of regret they see the things they should have done they never did because they did not choose the way of surrender they are living on campus you think life ends on campus having fun and going for clubs and parties you are a being of the of the flesh the bible said a man in honor that knoweth not is like the beast of the field that perishes precious people that their lives are supposed to be vessels to give expression to dimensions of god precious ladies that their wombs are supposed to be gates through which kingdom and miseries are raised they go to waste their lives for temporary pleasure because we are not taught the way of the mountain that's where the difference of humankind lies the encounters of your destiny are on the mountain and life is a product of encounters the encounters you have are what will change you but if you don't know the way of the mountain you will never have encounters you will live by the stories men tell you a preacher comes to them because you gave a very sound charge he calls you and say you're an apostle <laughs> hallelujah glory to the lamb glory
Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. The empowerment for your destiny is on the mountain of God. Moses went to the mountain and the rod he carried became the rod of God. Something came upon the rod. Some of you, what will make you is your mind, but your mind needs to be energized on the mountain. Some of you, what will make you is your tongue. Your tongue needs to be energized on the mountain. Some of you, what will make you is your skill. You need to be energized on the mountain. The mountain is where men are empowered for destiny. Even in the negative supernatural, they know. The guy who has the business next shop is not the pure water that makes him a millionaire. He knows the spirit that breathes upon it. It's only Christians that think life is a function of chance. So they are doing trial and error every day. You are a funny creature. The people of the world will defeat you in everything you do because you don't know your advantage. The guy knows his advantage is in Newi. And every December he must go to Newi with the requisite sacrifice. You, you are there talking. Say, God, we show mercy. Ah, God, love me. I'm the child of God. The mountains. The mountains. The cities that swallows people's destinies, they are conquered with the resources from the mountain. I, I did a teaching on technology of spirit civilization. I wish I had time to share some things with you. See, the city you live in have the ability to rob you of your destiny. Many people in the east today, they have the love of money. Not because they were born that way. The day the city was built, that intelligence was wired into the foundation. So even if you come to church, it will not help until you find the presence. The children of Israel were being carried to the land flowing with milk and honey. They saw the pillar of cloud every day and the pillar of fire. They were walking with a mobile miracle, but it didn't change their lives. They wanted to go to Egypt and eat garlic and cucumber. Because cities have the ability of brainwashing you and making you a slave forever. Even if you see miracles every day, it will not change anything. Do you know what it means? When three million people are walking and a cloud from heaven is moving ahead of them. And at night, that cloud becomes fire for 40 years. It didn't change their minds because Egypt had educated them. It's a technology called the technology of spirit cities. It enslaves men. But the cure is what you receive from the mountain. There's a city in the spirit called Egypt. Egypt will keep you in the world forever. Egypt will never allow you go because in Egypt there is Pharaoh. It is Pharaoh that makes your talent useless. It's Pharaoh that makes a king a servant. And he will slave with your talent. Nobody will know you are there. It's a system called Egypt. Egypt will keep you a perpetual sinner forever. You can't move. If you want to move, the gods of Egypt will fight you. You make resolutions every year. I want to serve the Lord. If Egypt is not dealt with, you can't. It's a system that keeps people in the world. But the cure to Egypt is the rod and the blood. The rod is the word of God. And the blood is the perfect atoning sacrifice of Jesus. That's what delivers men from Egypt. And all of these things are in the presence. The rod of Moses is in the ark. And the blood is what you pour on the ark. When you come to the presence, you have access to the rod and the blood. It begins to speak for you. So that the powers of Egypt can't fight you anymore. That's why in First John 1 9, he says, If we walk in the light as it is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. If you are in the presence, the blood of Jesus walks. He walks. And Pharaoh will let you go on his own. You don't know why most of you live in sin. You try. You can't. It's not trying. You don't try. When you come to spirit, you don't try. You either yield or you rebel. And your safety depends on the one you yield to. Because if he's superior in rank, then you are safe. If you, <laughs> if you yield to Satan, you will perpetually born in hell. Because God is superior in rank. But if you yield to God, Satan is in trouble. When you leave Egypt, you think you are going. Then Jericho stands before you. Jericho is
is a city that does not allow anything come out or going it blocks your way from destiny you don't know why you are born again but you can't get married ha. there are four of you in your house one is 38 one is 35 one is 33 one is 31 all of you are queens nobody is asking for your hand in marriage even the, war, the boys that you bought phone for when they collected the phone they ran away you have a degree you have done your masters you have done phd no job <laughs> they were okay it's okay you just humble yourself and do a small job you go they say you have a qualified it's jericho if you deal with jericho even if you carry pure water you'll be a millionaire it's a city and what deals with the city is the trumpet of the priest the trumpet the holy ghost tells you what to do and when you blast it the city sinks the trumpet in our dispensation is the prophecy and the bible said the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy the holy ghost puts that word in your mouth and you utter it i tell you things i have experience of my sisters three of them 34 years 32 years two of them not married until god told me you are a priest and he said go and blow your trumpet i went to them i say you are hereby dismissed from this house get married in six months three of them got married they are living with their children now it's a city but if you don't know how to stand on the mountain you will be buried in that city buried the way most of them were buried in the wilderness you will be buried And then even when you enter into the promised land, Babylon can come and carry you like this and take you out. There are cities. <laughs> Babylon. Babylon does not prevent you from entering the promised land. He allows you to enter first. When you settle down and say, now I'm blessed, then he will come and carry you back to slavery and bondage. What deals with Babylon is consecration prayer and fasting because to deal with babylon babylon is governed by principalities to deal with babylon you need to interact with angels because only princes can fight princes that's when archangels are mobilized on your account but for that thing to happen in the spirit you must be on the altar perpetually daniel and his friends they say they will not be defied by the king's meat it's not enough that you are excellent to the Bible said they were 10 times better than their peers, but they were still in what? Babylon. You can graduate with first class, but there's no prosperity. You are in Babylon. But by consecration and yieldedness to God in prayer and fasting, then the spirit realm, the powers of the spirit realm, begins to move in your favor. That's when the force of Babylon breaks. They can even make you a king in Babylon. First class. Then you become first class. You become the president of all the unemployed. And the government is giving you people stipend. 10,000. 10, because you are first class and you are intelligent. You will be the one speaking on their behalf. <laughs> Babylon. The cure to the affliction of humankind is the presence of Jesus. Some think it's prayer. It's not prayer. Some think it's fasting. It's not fasting. It's the presence of Jesus. So if prayer doesn't take you to the presence, it's a waste. Fasting doesn't take you to the presence, it's a waste. When you know this, your pride about spirituality will die. You will learn to yield to the Holy Spirit. That's why every morning we come and ask for help. Have you not noticed that most prayer warriors are gallant failures? You take pride in the things you do. No. Latch onto the Holy Ghost and let not go of the Holy Spirit until he does something to your life that's when your secret sins can fall the crisis of your life can fall and if you don't know the way of the presence many lives and destinies that are tied to you will be maligned because in this world we have space we have place the place god has given you anybody who is within the perimeter of that place his destiny is tied to you that was why when balaam fell he became the way of balaam many prophets now fall to the same iniquity of lost over money or lost over women is the way of Balaam. he said to peter he said simon simon 
satan desires to have you to sift you like wheat he said but i have prayed for you that your faith faileth not when thou art recovered strengthen their brethren why because when peter becomes weak the brethren becomes weak they are within the ambience and perimeter of his place some of you you are the deliverer of your family but the more you continue in your iniquities and disalignment with the holy spirit the more your family will remain in bondage you are running and inviting prophets from far and wide god is waiting for you to rise i told them in the benedium i said deliverance is not a function of the intervention of god it's a function of the rise of priests because god has paid the price kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne see my time is up but you can rise now and pray ask the lord to help you you ancient zion's king cry out kadosh you are mighty on your throne break forth the fountains of the deep cry out kadosh you are mighty on your throne you want to make up your mind this morning and say lord i choose the way of surrender come forward let me pray with you quickly i'm not going to minister in the spirit because the next minister is here there's no point causing a disarray you just want to make up your mind you've been a christian but you say i want to surrender completely to your will to your government just place your hand on your chest you don't need to come forward let's not let's not disalign or distort the place and make that commitment to jesus make that commitment now make that commitment you are mighty on your throne commitment this morning and you are genuine about it just lift your hands and ask the Lord to touch you tell him you want an experience yes you know a lot of doctrine you have name among men you have titles but perhaps you are not popular among the immortals you want an experiential walk with God you have struggled for too long now you need the help of the Holy Ghost Tell him to minister to you now. 
Let Jesus reign in your life. I got you ready. Yes, you ready. Jesus, you ready. Yes, you ready. I got you ready. Yes, you ready. Jesus, you ready. Yes, you ready. is a time to make decisions for Jesus. You can stop praying now. You can stop praying now. Just place your hand on your chest. I want to ask the Holy Ghost to minister to some people. Some of you, the Holy Ghost will just reveal things to you. Some of you, the Holy Ghost, you may just feel him tangibly. I don't want us to push so much this morning. It's more of a teaching series. Precious Holy Spirit. Stop praying now. Stop praying. Only the keyboard is enough for me. Just play the keyboard very low. Just focus on the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we bring too much religion into these things. Holy Spirit. Look upon our hearts. And as many as are making this decision for you this morning. Stretch your hands and touch them. Anoint them. Quicken them, inspire them, strengthen them. Right now, Holy Spirit, just breathe upon us like a gentle wind to help us to stand. Faithful Father, just focus on the Holy Ghost. God is going to be helping your decision to be eternal, putting strength on you. Holy Spirit This is the time Touch now Like a gentle wind Like a gentle wind Like a very gentle wind Minister to their hearts Lord Minister to their hearts Just minister to their hearts Lord They are yielded vessels Some of you are called Some of you have been receiving instructions But the ability to obey is not there this is the time. Just, just, just quietly, just quietly. You don't need to struggle. Just open to the Holy Spirit and allow Him. And allow Him. I don't want to push it. I want it to be an exper- experience, an experience of God, an experience of God. Some of you, He will be prompting you to make decisions, decisions. It's a hard business this morning. Decisions you've not made before. Decisions you've been struggling with. Just calm where you are. They make those decisions to God now. Decisions. To be a vessel in his hands. Perpetually. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now the Lord is going to be empowering, bringing empowerment to some of you. Some of you, your heart will become heavy. Some of you, your hand will begin to burn. Because it's time for empowerment. 
and so dear spirit of the living god put the garment of empowerment on them now you see on the mountain men shall be strengthened men shall be equipped for their calling for their ordination for their destinies empower them lord empower them put the weight of glory on them put the weight of glory let it be an inner surgery deep within deep within weight of glory weight of glory weight of glory weight of glory thank you father thank you father some of you your heart will be breaking now you'll be weeping in compassion you will realize you will realize how far you have wandered it's an inner operation just focus on jesus now just focus just focus don't be distracted that's right you are weeping just just flow allow the holy spirit it's an inner operation it's an inner operation it's an inner operation you know sometimes we church gets too noisy that we we don't let god do what he wants to do it's an inner operation okay stop playing the keyboard now so we don't get so emotional let's keep it calm so that people keep making decisions and in our operation just focus on jesus focus focus it's more of an inner operation come come let's keep it very calm and quiet come come and hold on it's an inner operation just focus focus those of you that your faith needs to be helped it's an inner operation make decisions make decisions you mustn't feel you mustn't feel just make decisions continually if you need to reiterate it go ahead it's an inner operation very quietly let's not get emotional about it just quietly those who need to be helped we'll just help them quickly it's an inner operation thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit just gently just be talking to god talk to him just talk to him from the depths of your heart make decision great meetings are meetings where great decisions are made it's an inner operation just keep keep calm ushers if you can help them to stay calm thank you lord sister that is weeping profusely dear lord jesus thank you thank you thank you lord thank you thank you jesus thank you jesus we've lived lawlessly for too much, for too long and then we come to church we shout in tongues and we think it's about shouting meanwhile our life is is far from god talk to jesus hey help me it's an inner operation deep within deep within ask god to touch you minister to you and make decisions for him is the decisions you make that will determine your relevance in the kingdom and it the direction of your commitment is the direction of your decision you don't make decisions for god your life will have no definite direction what we are doing this morning we are redirecting the paths of our destinies we are redirecting we are redirecting the path of our destiny most of us have very great destinies but we will never realize them because we are not taught how to yield our lives to god perpetually life is a function of the progressive instructions of the holy spirit that you consistently obey thank you father thank you father finally somebody is about to be set on fire 
One person is about to be set on fire for Jesus now. It's an evangelical flair. I just sense it in the spirit. And so precious Holy Spirit, put that fire on that one as we end the meeting. Put that fire on that one as we end the meeting. Put that fire on that one. That one you are anointing. That one you are anointing. That one you are anointing. Help him so that the chair doesn't. Thank you, Lord. Thank I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also, if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.